I'd like to call to order today, Monday, August 8th, public hearing for the City of Tampa's Architectural Review Commission. Welcome everyone. I'm Susan Klaus Smith and I am the chair of the commission. If you're here to present a project, you will have limited time to make your presentations, so we suggest being thorough but concise. When coming to the microphone, you will need to identify yourself and your relationship to the project. The commissioners will not ask any questions during your presentation and your project should be presented in the following order. The site plan, the elevations, architectural details, and wall sections. Staff will then present their staff report and we will then ask for public comment. Following your presentation, the commissioners will be asking questions in the same order as the presentation. When coming up to the podium, please state and spell your name clearly. If you're here to speak for or against a project, your time will be limited to three minutes, so take some time now to summarize your comments because three minutes goes by very quickly. Following the public comment, the applicant will have five minutes for rebuttal. The public hearing will then be closed and the only comments which will be allowed after the public hearing is closed will be in response to any questions from the commissioners. The commissioners will then discuss the case and will make their decision based on the city ordinance chapter 27 of the city zoning code, the design guidelines, the secretary of interior standards, historic preservation development reviewer HPDRC comments, and the testimony given at the public hearing tonight. Please remember the ARC can only act on items that are within our specific jurisdictional responsibility. Owners and or agents are independently responsible to obtain any appropriate permits and or approvals. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do silence your cell phones. And I'll ask my fellow commissioners to introduce themselves, starting on my left. Dan Myers, I'm an architect. John Prokop, I practice architecture. Brent Taylor, I'm a general contractor and vice chair of the commission. My name is Stephen Sutton. I am also a registered architect. I also hold the architectural historian chair for this commission. With us tonight, we have our attorney, Dana, Dana Crosby Collier, sorry, uh, Alexis Guzman, Ron Vila, and Dennis Fernandez. We'll go ahead on to the reading of the minutes from July 10th. I have a motion. Um, if there are no comments, can we have a motion to enter the minutes into the record? I move that the Architectural Review Commission public hearing meeting minutes for Monday, July 10th, no, uh, for, yes, July 10th, 2023, be accepted as presented. Second. All in favor, please state aye. Originally indicating so. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Rod, I mean, uh, Dennis. Good evening, Commissioners. Dennis Fernandez, Architects Review and Historic Preservation Manager. Welcome to this evening's public hearing, both to you and to our applicants and the public. Uh, just a couple uh, minor issues to go over. I do have the uh, July 2023 ARC staff approvals to enter into the record. We will provide those to the clerk. Um, additionally, we will be holding the second segment of our August public hearings this Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Uh, so we, have a, we still have a part of the agenda to deal with uh, later this week. Uh, with that, we'll move into conflicts of interest and ex parte communication, and I'll ask our, our legal counsel to lead that discussion. Good evening, commissioners. Dana Crosby Collier from the City Attorney's Office. Um, I would like to ask if any member has a conflict with any item on the agenda this evening. None. I, I have none. none. Okay, none. thank you. And has any member engaged in an ex parte communication relating to any item on the agenda this evening? I have none. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on, we do have three continuations that we have to deal with uh, this evening. Uh, we have um, to have separate motions on these. So beginning uh, with the first one, it's ARC 23-180 uh, slash TACPA 23-05 <clears throat> for the property at uh, 110 East Oak Avenue, 1813 North Franklin Street, 1708 North Florida Avenue, 1905 North Florida Avenue, 1909 North Florida Avenue. This is a uh, request to, for a comprehensive plan 
amendment, which this board uh, provides a recommendation to city council, and they are requesting to continue this till the September 11th, 2023 public hearing at 5.30 p.m. I move that ARC 23-180 slash TA slash CPA 23-05 for the properties located at 110 East Oak Avenue 1813 North Franklin Street, 1708 North Florida Avenue, 1905 North Florida Avenue, and 1909 North Florida Avenue be continued to the ARC meeting scheduled for Monday, September 11th, 2023, in a public hearing here in this room I'll at 5.30 p.m. I'll second the motion. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Our next continuation is ARC 23-235 for the property located at 830 South Willow Avenue. Uh, this is to uh, balance out the agendas for this uh, month. So we're continuing it from this, uh, this hearing tonight to August the 9th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. Motion, please. I move to continue ARC 23-235 to Wednesday, August 9th, 2023 hearing. I'm sorry, the address is 830 South Willow Avenue at 5.30 p.m. I'll second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. And the last is ARC 23-204 for the property at 2809 North Central Avenue. This applicant application was incomplete, but to uh, extend their, their notice, uh, we do need to have a continuation to the October 2nd, 2023 public hearing at 5.30 p.m. I'll move uh, to continue ARC 23-204 at 2809 North Central Avenue uh, to the Monday, October 2, 2023 public hearing at 5.30 p.m. I will second that motion. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the swearing. Uh, anyone who's going to be providing uh, testimony or giving public comment this evening, including staff, if you would please stand and raise your right hand for the swearing. And with that, we're ready for our first case. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Ron Veal, I'm staff with Historic Preservation. The first agenda item is ARC 23-122. This is for the address of 1802 West Chaton Avenue. This is in the Hyde Park Historic District. The primary structure is a contributing structure that dates back to 1917. The zoning attached to the parcel is RS-60. The request as for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction for an accessory structure with site improvements. The square footage of the accessory structure is approximately 900 square foot, which is within the allowment uh, under the zoning classification. Moving to the photo presentation. Property in question is highlighted in the green parcel. It is a corner parcel. It's on the corner of Chaton and Fremont. There is an alley that runs to the rear, and you see the, the fabric that was associated with this parcel, and this reflects uh, the inventory in 1929. Going to the uh, photo essay, this is looking at the primary structure. Uh, when this first came in and uh, we were dealing with the, the current owners, uh, the building uh, was in a deteriorated state. They've uh, Worked with our office many times and uh, brought the building back to its, its luster. So this is the front elevation, which faces Jatan. You see some of the character defining features here with the overhangs, the barge rafter, the gable vent, and the trim around the windows. This is looking at the west elevation. You see some paired windows and some single windows with the lap siding. This is looking at some of the inventory on that block. This is a budding to the west, which is also a contributing structure. Going back to the uh, subject site, this is the front elevation and then looking at the east elevation. 
and the house directly across the street. So you pick up on the vocabulary of the neighborhood. Moving to the rear, this was part of the original structure here and here, the first and second floor, and this was an addition. Some street elevations, this is looking down Fremont to the north and turning around to the south. This is looking at the existing non-contributing accessory structure that's associated with this parcel. You see the setback from the property line from the uh, secondary street and then the setback from the alley. Going back to the primary structure, this is part of the addition. And just getting the relationship of, of everything on site. This is the, the back of the primary structure. This is the location of the outhouse now, the, the accessory structure, and then the location of the pool. So that concludes the photo presentation. This time I'll have the agent uh, address the board. Mr. Lloyd. Good evening, Commissioners. Jim Lloyd, LLOYD, with Lloyd Craftsman representing the homeowners, the Wagamans at 1802 West Jaton Avenue. Uh, we're proposing a construction of a 900 square foot accessory structure. I'll start with the site plan here. And just address a couple of the comments that were under the conditions, which was um, correcting the direction of the cardinal on the drawings, which is north. Fremont runs north south, so we're good there. Um, there is an existing fence, a six foot tall fence that I'll show you a picture of later that does encroach uh, on the setback. So that'll be moved back or on the right away. So that'll move back over to the property line. Um, there will also be an angled portion of the fence uh, for visibility when the, uh, when somebody's coming out of the driveway that way, that was a transportation request. Uh, we will provide scoring. There's currently scoring on the the sidewalk that will be matched on the driveway. Um, you've got three and a half foot setback to allow for the uh, eaves. You've got 15 foot building separation between the, uh, the two buildings there. And then just as note, the uh, air conditioning is gonna be going in the rear uh, of the building, which will be within the property line, so no issues with that as far as the uh, encroachment on the, the alleyway. Just kind of a little bit more of a blow up so that you can see specifically what we just talked about. Moving on to the elevations. This is going to be the front elevation that's going to be facing Fremont. Um, those are Clope Coachman doors. There was a comment about the, uh, the center uh, mullion on the, on the door being a little wider. I think you all are familiar with the Clope doors, the Coachman series, that are a good representation, fits the uh, the neighborhood well. Um, siding on the home is going to be a six inch reveal uh, siding. It is going to be hardy board. The uh, siding and the trim will match what the existing home is uh, as far as exposure and dimensions. Um, same thing, trim on the windows. Um, it was also requested that we add a uh, cover over the man door on the first floor, which we did. Um, matching limitations, there's a max 22 foot 6 height elevation. This is 22 foot 3 in the 70s there. Moving on to the other elevations, north and south. Uh, there will be a 5V metal roof that matches the existing structure. And then I'll show you a, a, a better detail of what the stairway is going to look like. These are four by four posts with two by four pickets in between. This is our section uh, wall section. Again, showing hardy lap siding, six inch reveal to match the main structure. The w uh, w windows are going to be Windsor, uh, wood, aluminum clad, double hung windows. Four and a half inch trim with a seven inch mull on the double windows, inch and a half sill board to match the existing residence. The rafter tails will be exposed two by six with a beadboard soffit. 
and just a small drip edge that uh, connects them. This photo here shows the existing fence. This is a six foot board on board PT fence that was stained. This is going to continue to be the same fence. We're just going to move that back into the yard so that it meets the requirements for the setback and then we're going to clip that corner so that as they're backing out of the garage there won't be any issues with uh, sight lines. This photo shows another accessory structure we've done in the past. Similar details as far as representation of garage door. That's a Cop uh, Clope Coachman door. That's the same uh, Class per door that we're going to be proposing for the, uh, the man door on the first floor and the second floor. Shows some window layouts. Here's the fence detail that we discussed. So these are actually going to be 4x4, four four, not 6x6, six six, but then these are, this is kind of the, the typical railing that we normally do in Hyde Park, which is a 2x4 vertical picket with 2x4 space and then 2x4 top and bottom rails with a 2x6 handrail that ties in and then goes down the stairs. It's all wood. This is just uh, the front elevation again um, as a reminder for the detail of what the header uh, trim is going to look like on the main or on the accessory structure and the, the, uh, and the casing. This is a shot of what we do. Uh, this is a new construction that we just are finishing up now that shows uh, the bead board that we recess into the tails. Um, it's, a, it's a true three quarter inch bead board, two by sixes, small drip edge. Um, if there's ventilation, we'll do um, some burr blocking ventilation if necessary. This is the Windsor window that we've installed. Uh, wood wood window with aluminum cladding on the exterior. They look very similar. They have a, a, a taller, uh, bigger rail that kind of is a little bit more representative of the um, original wood windows that were in the neighborhood. <clears throat> this shows the existing front door on the home. You'll see the overhang of the header detail and the wider uh, casings and then six inch reveal siding also shows a similar style of what we're going to be doing with the door hardware there and then also uh, electrical fixtures that's a close-up of the uh, exterior trim on one of the on the existing house the main windows so showing a four and a half inch wide board step back a little bit so you can see the thickness and profile of the of the sill um, which we, we build similarly with a pitch on it we put a little kerf on the bottom as a drip edge that's the existing uh, <clears throat> the main house uh, overhang currently so you can see some of these were replaced with just one buys but the main portion of the house is a a bead board with extended um, rafter tails, exposed rafter tails. So it'll be a similar design to that. This is a um, PlasPro DFR 3C. This is the, the door that I showed you in the other photograph. Um, so two panel below with glass above. <clears throat> Very similar you know, contributing style to the neighborhood. We think this is a nice historic style. We used it on several of the other um, accessory structures we built. And there's a blow up of the detail of the Clope Coachman door with the wider uh, styles. And then we'll put um, some added handles on there to make it look a little bit more historic. existing house. Uh, let's see. So on the conditions as far as the, I showed you the cardinal drawing or the cardinal direction was corrected, the uh, visor over the man door was completed. Um, we talked about the details of the uh, fencing height location um, with pictures in the site plan. <clears throat> the scoring pattern on the uh, driveway will be consistent with the neighborhood. 
Um, showed some drawings of the railing and gable vent and window casings. Um, the garage door we discussed, the Clope Coachman. The design exception is administrative. That's uh, within the height requirements. Um, oh, there also was a, a request to center the window on the second floor. Um, so this, this window we had originally offset because there's a bathroom right here. So the clients agreed that it would be okay if we centered this for architectural, um, just to have this little, look a little better fenestration-wise. So they, they were okay with centering that window, so we did take care of that. Um, went over the site plan, wall sections. We talked about roof materials, overhang materials, wall finish. The foundation is, is not applicable. It's a slab on grade, so we won't have any finishes on the foundation. Uh, doors, windows, garage doors, trim material, hardware and lighting we discussed. So I believe that covers all of our requirements. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yep. Move on to the staff report. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Ron Vilam, staff with Historic Preservation. Staff's finding that this new accessory structure is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines. We reviewed the plans on July 22nd, where they were submitted um, and uploaded into a cellar. The conditions have been addressed. If this project is to move forward, uh, I have two considerations. One is that the design exception shall go forward. That is a zoning administration uh, function that he needs to start that process. Uh, through the zoning and through preservation, the additional height from 15 foot in height where all accessory structures kind of live at within the city of Tampa, there is an extended height within the historic districts that they can go up to 22 and a half feet. So that process should be started and approved. And then uh, what the board has been consistent in approving in the past is hardy board of the smooth kind. So that should be illustrated on its plans. And I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you, Ron. Move on to the public comment period. If there's anyone in the audience who'd like to come forward to speak either for or against this project, this is your opportunity to do so at this time. Seeing no one, we'll, <clears throat> we'll move on to the commissioners asking questions. Starting on my left, Mr. Myers. Um, we did, we have seen this project previously in a, under a somewhat, under somewhat different circumstances. Um, and there was a really nice door, a man door, going into that existing structure. It appears to have that, the, the one that you're, that you're going to demolish. And it appears to be one that perhaps came from the original house. I don't believe I'm, that that was an original door. I'll have to see if I, I may have some photos in here that I can look at or staff might have a photo of that. I think mm -hmm. that's a newer fiberglass door. Ah, I okay. Believe. Yes, sir. All right, so not the, the man door, not the... Correct, correct. yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, it was a very nice door. I noticed it and I thought, aha, here is something that can be reused. Right. Also, can we look at the, I believe it's the north elevation. Sure. And my only comment, and this is only a comment, um, a, I just wish to raise a possibility. The two small windows, one is in a kitchen, I believe, or a, a small, you know, small area there in the in this in the bonus room here, mm -hmm. and the other is in the bathroom. Um, this home has a, a fair variety of different windows, and the windows on the the sort of pop-up second floor are uh, slightly different. It seems to me like there is perhaps an opportunity to do something uh, perhaps a little more playful than these two small small windows. Okay. I think that's something for you and, the, and, the, and your client. No further questions. Okay. Mr. Popo? I have no questions at this time. Mr. Taylor. Is it, 
on the gable then is your intent to match what's on the existing house on the successory structure yes yeah they the, typically we'll, what we'll do is we'll put um, a piece of hardy panel smooth hardy panel on the plywood first and then build the, and paint that black and then build that frame around it because typically with this like this will have a vaulted ceiling up there so it won't be an actual vent but right. it'll it'll represent the, the style of what's on okay the and then you structure you uh, heard the comment regarding the hardy siding are you good with the smooth yes yeah absolutely yeah that's sorry I'd, that's typically all we use out there is smooth yes sir and i'm asking this next question because i can't really tell these couple of white marks i'm seeing here at the bottom are those flood vents no this is not in, it's not in a flood zone i'm not quite sure it's just kind of an anomaly on the plan okay I'm sure, yeah i'm not sure what that is i just saw it there and wasn't no, sure not, if that was flood on that property and do you have any plans to s use any sort of screening around that ac unit i realize it's underneath the staircase but it's under the it's under the stairs in the, in the backyard of the property um i'm sure that we could add something around it we could do a little bit of screening something similar maybe to what the vent is you know we've done some lattice work around it there's a couple of details like that we use under the houses over there that we could probably use something on okay sure i think that's all i have for now mr sutton Mm -hmm. Hardy board, uh, am I correct in understanding uh, that uh, you're planning on matching the exposure of that lap siding to match the existing correct. building? Correct. It's a six-inch reveal, so it'd be a seven and a quarter-inch siding with a six-inch reveal. Now, typically, uh, an accessory structure um, is is differentiated in any one of a number of different ways as a uh, uh, not so much as a diminishment, but as a minor status mm -hmm. uh, in conjunction to its uh, 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 main uh, dwelling on the site. Have you had an opportunity to discuss uh, with your client uh, a, uh, the use of a different exposure, wider or narrower, to we could probably go narrower. the two? I think we could go narrower on it. Maybe go to a five inch exposure instead of six. That, that but might I haven't, be, I haven't That might be something you might want to discuss uh, because in in this neighbor, in this neighborhood, um, uh, this historic district, uh, there is a, a great deal of variation between what is done for an accessory structure and one that is uh, than one what you see for your primary. Mm -hmm. And you are using uh, as small as this is a lot of the details. You've got the eaves, you've got the vent, yes, uh, you've got the window surrounds, the door surrounds. So there's not a whole lot left to make that differentiation actually happen. The siding is perhaps your opportunity to make that really sing with respect to okay. what happens elsewhere in, in the historic district. Makes sense. That is all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for the applicant? <coughs> I just want to clarify something from staff on this design exception. You've got two different heights here. Twenty showing that there's 22 3 and 5 8 and 22 9 and 5 8 what is the actual height that's being presented i just want to get that clarified can i, can I respond to that mm -hmm. that was from the original plans that we had submitted there was a discrepancy on the july 27th plans that we submitted we corrected that so it's it's 20 the building itself is 22 foot 3 and 5 8 and that's consistent across the the plans that have been submitted right, thank since you since that point yes sir Okay, any other questions for the applicant? Seeing then, you do have five minutes for rebuttal. I don't have any, by the way. Okay. Um, you do have five <coughs> minutes for rebuttal. I'm, I'm good. I definitely will present the, you know, the items that you all discussed to the clients and go over that with them, and we'll discuss it with staff. So thank okay. you. Yeah. We'll go ahead and close the public portion of the hearing, and we will um, discuss the case. I think this little project cleaned up really well from the from the first round. I, I think it's come together quite nicely. Yeah, they got the the original structure declared as non-contributing as opposed to that contributing. That helps. That helps a lot. Um, not having to demo helps a lot. Um, yeah, I think I think the project is is just it's a nice little correct, well done with the suggestions. I think it'll be a, a, a good addition. I do agree.
Any other comments or concerns? Any concerns? No? Uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so I agree with a couple of comments I heard, but I think we just throw those in with whatever motion comes out. I agree. That being said, can we entertain a motion at this time? I think so. Okay. Move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC. 23-122 for the property located at 1802 West Jaton Avenue with the following conditions. That screening be added for the, uh, for the condensing unit of the air conditioning system and that smooth siding be used. Because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Hyde Park Historic District design, design Guidelines of the City of Tampa for the following reasons. The project is consistent with the rest of the, with the rest of the design or with the rest of the Historic District in its scale, massing, orientation, and, the, and it maintains the materials within the district. Mr. Myers, if I may, should we not add the design exception for the building height? Ah, yes. As, as well as the uh, request for the smooth hardy board as opposed to texture. And that the screening be coordinated with staff so we don't leave that open-ended. He did mention it. I heard the screening, but not, I'm just trying to leave it open-ended. Yeah, I, I, I would like to amend my motion to include that screening shall be coordinated with staff that the, that the, uh, the siding shall be smooth, that, they, that the uh, applicant will consider narrower siding and, ex and a narrow siding exposure uh, that perhaps does not match that of the existing building, and that they must uh, secure the required design exemption for the height of the structure. A second. I will second that motion. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand indicating so. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulations. Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Velam, staff with Historic Preservation. Moving to our next agenda item, which is ARC 23 298. This is for the address of 406 South Newport Avenue. This is also in the Hyde Park Historic District. The primary structure dates back to 1923 and it is contributing. The underlying zoning is RM24, which means it can be uh, multifamily, which it uh, currently was when this uh, current owner purchased it and he is changing it back to single family. Uh, it is residential in nature. Moving forward, the request is for a certificate of appropriateness for an addition to the primary structure with site improvements. Just to give you a little bit of history, this is in the expansion area of Hyde Park, which was approved by City Council in January of 2023. And I believe this is the first week request that we have in this expansion area. So moving to the Sanborn map, looking the, the, the addition to the historic fabric in the district was De Leon to Boulevard and going up. So these structures in here became part of the historic district of Hyde Park. The neighborhood reached out to us. They thought that there was enough fabric in here. We went through the process, it went forward, and ultimately uh, it's in front of you today. So looking at the vicinity map, to give you a little better understanding of that, Once again, it's De Leon to Boulevard and up. That was outside of the district and now it's part of the district. You see it is incorporated into the red line which uh, indicates the local historic district. Property in question is right here, it's on Newport. You'll see a large structure to the north that uh, was a school and currently it, is, it underwent an adaptive reuse and it's part of the fabric of Hyde Park. 
and just to the south, there was a non-contributing structure there that years ago somebody uh, purchased and put some infill development that you'll see that through the photo presentation. But no review was, was needed at that time because it was outside of the local district. So looking from above, you see some trees that are incorporating uh, the subject site. It does face Newport, I stated. You see the large uh, schoolhouse that was relevant in the early 1900s and is still um, there today in a, in a different form. And then the larger structure to the south. This is looking at the primary structure. Uh, it does have some cladding on it. Uh, the owner is going to go through uh, his presentation and bring that to your attention. You see the, the larger um, piers that are here that represent that, that high-end craftsman style of the early 1900s. Looking down the quarter cashier. And as part of the relocation and site improvements, they're going to relocate the mechanicals and, and create a mechanical yard on the southern portion of the site. Just looking at the primary structure and then the northern elevation. This is that schoolhouse that I spoke about and now it's a apartments. This is once again going back to the primary elevation and then the southern elevation. You see the, the generous porch with the columns. It does have a secondary stairwell here going up to what was you know, the, the second structure or the second uh, housing within the structure. This is the new construction that is abutting to the south. That was prior to this becoming a district. And some street shots looking down Newport in both directions. And this is to the, the north. Some of the fabric within the district. That's why the, the inventory uh, reached out to us and uh, it stated that it was needing of the designation. This is looking at the back of the structure. and the pool and the accessory structure in the proximity. Once again, looking at the, the back of the structure and the accessory structure that's in place and from the alley. So that concludes the photo presentation and the owner will address the board at this time. Thank you, Ron. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm Dave Moyer. I'm the owner. I do not have my architect or contractor here, so I apologize if this presentation doesn't flow the way it was intended. But the realistic idea is we have a house school. We bought this house right around 2014. It was utilized as a multifamily where it had an apartment on the second level with a kitchenette and downstairs, pretty small uh, kitchen with a bedroom and an office. And we've when I bought, I was single, and uh, fast forward over 10 years, married, and now have a two-year-old, and now have a kid, and I have my family, my wife's family from Chicago who visits, and I have my family from New York who visits. So we've been building this home throughout. It was never in Hyde Park. So the first thing what I did when I bought the house is I wanted a pool. I put it on the south portion because it's the sunnier side. Stupid idea, because the reality, I'm limited now what, what I was going to do. And then we built the, uh, we're trying to find storage and we built a mother-in-law suite right around 2020. And instead of making it a garage, we decided to kind of leave that as a little storage on the first floor with a multi, with a apartment on the second floor because we didn't want to lose yard space by having the amount of turn radius required for the alley. So there is a mother-in-law suite that is perfect for us because we have our family that visits and then we use that downstairs space as kind of a little bit of storage for the pool. We're here today to try to get that, uh, receive a final certificate of appropriateness. Um, we've worked with Ron. Um, this has been something that we've been wanting to do for a few years. So it did fall in our situation where we are part of the historic uh, Hyde Park, which is a great, it's a blessing. We did vote for it, but at the same time, it limits the what we wanted to do with the house. Um, so with that being said, the goal for us is that we have a 1,700 square foot primary home and we really needed to get it a little bit larger, really to fit a couple of additional bedrooms upstairs and expand upon the kitchen space that we could you know, enjoy 
more than having one person in a kitchen circling around that kitchen. So, um, and we love the neighborhood. We've been a part of it. We love how the proximity to downtown. Um, so we've continued to improve this property since we've purchased it. The neighborhood has continued to turn into a more family centric. Our next door neighbor is McKinley with air conditioning units that face our pool and we're great neighbors trying to improve it and make this a family home. And uh, we're trying not to move and not have to buy a different home to fit our needs. Um, so these are the existing Newport home. Some of the photos that Ron shared, I'll make that quick. We met with the intention of going into the, to the left, to McKinley. We wanted to preserve our backyard for our family and our kids. And we thought that if we could move to the left a bit, that would give us a more of a box so we could fit everything we wanted. You know, the first thing we saw Johnson Pope for an, you know, for an attorney maybe seeking a variance. We don't really have time for variance. We want to be good neighbors. We want to conform to the neighborhood. We want to do those right things. So this box to the left that you're seeing was our vision. Really, we don't park cars in that carport. That carport doesn't fit our cars, and we don't use that side alley because it's not real estate because we don't have a car and we don't drive into a garage apartment because our mother-in-law suites on the right. So all of those things have transitioned us into some other ideas. So we propose that we've made revisions and we've met with Ron's team and they've been super helpful in giving us guidance. And then on the June 19th Zoom meeting, they said it was consistent with the RFC and they gave us a good scope of ideas that we think uh, meet what we were trying to do, which those conditions were, we were trying to expand upon on that second level to give ourselves a little bit more real estate for that bedroom upstairs, which is real tight. We had some window placements that were multiple sizes in different locations, and we you know, wanted to make sure that it was ABC window and consistent, and um, we wanted to make sure some of those details met the historic, but also everything that we were doing on our addition was a little different, right? So we understood the, our plan and uh, hopefully we can share it. So I took the time to go through the neighborhood, which we do all the time. We, we have dogs and we walk this neighborhood. And the, the intent was to kind of create this crucifix concept, which isn't unusual to the neighborhood and one that I believe the staff thought would be supportive of our narrative where we're not really changing the front of the property. It should be not noticeable from the street and uh, the, the work that we're trying to achieve is in the back. So several examples in the neighborhood to showcase that what we are doing is consistent with what is out there in the neighborhood and could have taken photos pretty much all day, but I'll stop at that. And um, for our final showcase here, you know, we think we've addressed the conditions. We've met that front historic elevation. We're clear what is historic and what is subor subordinate and really trying to get this 1,700 square foot into about 25, 2,600 square feet in a respectable, contained way, also trying to keep it budget friendly at the same time. Um, so with that being said, you can see to the left is our existing, to the right is proposed. So there is a uh, tail at the back of the property which conforms around the, the pool deck and gives a little buffering from that two-story while being respectful to the left-hand side carport side, which is also moving. Um, we have an AC unit that sits in the middle of the carport. It's a package unit. We're likely going to have to have air conditioning on that second level. So all that equipment is, is relocated to the south portion of the house away from that, that eyesight. Then from there, you can see our proposed right-hand side. That's what we're living in today. So uh, toddlers in that den. We're in that owner suite. The kitchen does not work for us. And uh, so the left-hand side is our proposed where we do have this larger family room to gather. The dining, the living, and the den all kind of stay consistent. And now that side stairs we don't use because that is for, you know, apartment dweller who would come in. And then the, the, the actual stair landing is too short to actually bring couch furniture up. So the whole stair configuration is being modified coming out from the other side. So that's gonna open up a little bit of storage in that den study. Um, and then the pool deck, there's a back bath, which I think plays really well towards the pool. And those are French doors and doors that are consistent with the uh, historic nature to get outside. From there, our upstairs, you can see the airplane style loft up to the right. So the stairs come up to this loft space that was a kitchenette 
completely removed. We don't utilize it in any functional capacity just because of its space. And we have two bedrooms to the left and right, which is currently a guest and a, a baby room. Um, pet AC units that are in the windows um, and stays pretty hot up there most times of the year. And uh, so we have a proposed plan to the left, which keeps that bedroom three. It actually feels like it's smaller um, in nature, but it is consistent. We're not modifying that from a size of the front elevation. We've pushed back bath two and bedroom two as far back as possible. We've added windows. So from the front of the appearance, you're gonna see that. We've left the existing windows on bedroom three. We've added windows on the walk-in closet to, for the appearance. Um, the owner suite kind of comes through the middle, which gives us another option of the walk-in closet to the left because the bedroom two closets a little small. And then we have windows on the owner suite and the uh, soaking tub modifies what my wife needs. And uh, I think the closet's good enough for what we can do. Here is the roof lineage. Um, you will note there's a small little pop-up in the center area, I believe just for our intake, that we really have to modify the stair and the stair and the landing to really meet you know, code in general. So trying to leverage that space to the side to give ourselves a little bit more cushion. Um, and now we have the proposed front elevation and the proposed, uh, so on the bottom left is the proposed front. You can see the beautiful nature of the windows on the crucifix, the existing windows on the front. Um, we're taking the opportunity to uh, improve the front door. Currently, you know, when it's humid, those doors don't open. So I, my mother-in-law cannot get outside currently, but we lock her in there, which is good. But we wanted to kind of give that kind of that glass appearance on the sides um, and make something a little bit more grandiose because we feel that the house is becoming, you know, much more substantial to the neighborhood. And then uh, the back side, um, you know, we, we are completely trying to expand upon the not the apartment side, but to the left, that's where that wing to the bathroom is and allows people to come in and out from the back. And then that uh, kitchen living space kind of has those French doors leading out. And you'll note that there's windows on every direction. They're consistently, you know, A, B, C. So the big ones below are already existing. The two bigger ones on the front elevation are existing. So you're only seeing two new windows um, shown. And then the side, obviously, this is where we're, we're starting to expand the home, but we've left it easy for you to visualize. So the, really that, that change is coming from the back of the home, so you shouldn't be able to see it from the front of the home. And on the opposite side, you know, pretty different change because that's where this, this staircase is going. So we're removing that staircase. We're making that where the stairs are coming up from the home. We're adding more windows in that owner suite, which is on the top right. And those um, smaller windows are in the landing of where that uh, staircase comes up. Plenty of little details here that an architect can spend more time on than me, um, but by all means, you guys are the architects and contractors with those records, so you guys, you know, by all means, take time to study it. But the intent, though, is just as you're saying, we have the cladding of the property is currently vinyl, which is paint, you know, painted over vinyl. Below it is wood. Ron promised me that all the wood would be perfect and I don't have to make any changes. I don't. I took a tape measure. It seems like they're actually different, but our intent is that the back portion of the property is still wood and it's a different width and sizing than the existing. So we've noted that as six inches while the front kind of looks like it's more towards eight inches, but, the, but to be quite frank, there may be some variables, but we will... I'm hoping when we get going on construction, we can work with your team and everyone's team to make sure it's perfectly consistent with what you guys are looking for. Um, the windows details as well. We put, we put brand new windows in in 2020. They are high impact. They have that three uh, pronged or bronzing facing. So any of the windows to our addition are going to be that single hung versus that three style colonial. So you can kind of see the differences on this elevation between what existed, although it existed in 2020, versus what's existing potentially in 2024. Um, from the detail, the crawl space as well is currently brick, and we, we are modifying that to be this painted uh, style lattice uh, material that will really showcase the difference between what is existing and our new proposal. And then the staircases, I believe they will be exactly, the intent is to marry that. I don't think there's any difference in material that we could quantify to make it different, but the intent is that it's a wood railing that very much 
you know, we have that top picture there that matches that exact style in a wood nature. The roofs will be shingle, um, which will be, you know, new, but it'll be the existing's already shingle, so that'll have a consistent look throughout. The accessory structure is a hardy board material on concrete block with shingles, so there, there's a distinct difference between that accessory structure and our single family home structure and probably just really trying to carry out all of the existing architectural details um, with uh, the rafter tails and those details and the, and, and the undercarriage of the home. Um, and so materials, you know, we referenced the roof shingle, the overhang materials, rafter soffits, fascia. We're, you know, the goal is here is to restore the original design intentions and as much as you guys would like us to do. Um, the exterior wall, you know, we referenced kind of that, the, that wood exposure. We understand what the goal is, is that the new additional is subordinate to the existing. It's vinyl. Once we rip off all the vinyl, we understand all the details around what existing on the wood. We are going to either go probably on a smaller dimension from that width perspective. Um, the, this brick, it's a, and then the existing is brick. We're doing a stem wall black. Uh, the doors and windows will very much be likely more or less trying to conform to what you see on the existing home. Uh, you know, we, we, want, we put a sliding glass door, not a sliding glass, it's a French door, it's the double hung window, it's a glass. Um, trim materials are all going to be wood. The porch materials will be a wood decking, a wood rail. And really would like to do the bronze concept with all of the, um, with all of the fixtures and not too much of it. So here's the existing window. It does have this, um, that is, is staying. That's the upstairs window. Um, and there is kind of the example to the left of not having the, 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 the details in the middle. And then on the bottom, you can see it's a vinyl, it's a vinyl material that comes into this wood frame window with a, a vinyl wood beam, you know, wood chasing. So once we rip all of this vinyl off, it'll be existing wood and our goal will be to kind of create a little bit of a uniqueness with a, a different width of wood. An example of the double door front, not that this is the exact product, but we would work with your team on identifying what you feel is the most appropriate. That's the French door, that's a single door. So from the back, we have a single door that leads out from the bathroom, and then there's a double door that comes out from the living room space. Some details, right? So that's underneath the vinyl uh, when you rip it out. So when I bought it, the home was green. Uh, we changed it to a white. Uh, green was still looking good, but um, white was in. Um, and just giving you some images of what, the, what that looks like. Um, and then here's on the upstairs. Uh, so some of the wood uh, in the existing structure likely needs re replacement. So we're gonna go through that process with you guys to restore the home as much as possible make it something we're all proud of. And uh, here are some of the lighting and hardware again, really kind of keeping with that bronzing concept and, and keeping it probably consistent with what we've researched in the craftsman style. And then our demo plan, um, this should be not, not really affecting the existing structure. Obviously we're gonna remove the vinyl and, and replace structural items that need to be structural, but the addition is all focused on the back of the property. Um, so it should be respectful of what the existing home is. And um, really, in theory, that, that is the presentation. Hopefully I've covered as much as I can. Again, I'm not the architect, so those detailed questions that you guys are about to fire on me, I will do my best. Thank you, sir. We'll move on to the staff report. Commissioners, good afternoon. Ron Vila, uh, staff for the Historic Preservation. Staff's finding that this application is consistent with the Hyde Park Design Guidelines. We reviewed the plans that were submitted on June 19, 2023. In working with the Moyer family, early on, I, I think it was apparent through his presentation that they came in with a different footprint. And then now working with the standards that we have for Hyde Park, he modified his uh, original request to be in keeping with our criteria. Um, there were a couple condition and bullet items that, that were addressed this evening. There was one that I wanted just to call out that's identified here. I believe it is the uh, third bullet item that the, the cockpit on the second floor, they had an addition to the front of that, uh, which is something that we try to stay away from. We try to do the additions to the back and subordinate to the primary structure. So that has been removed. Also the footprint of the building, 
was inside of the Porter Cachera and towards the rear. That has been removed and been allocated in different places as indicated through his presentation uh, this evening. Uh, we did talk about the placement and sizes of windows. If you notice, all the new windows are one over one windows to distinguish what's original and what's uh, new. So that is illustrated on the drawings as you go through each elevation. That was one way for him to delineate. There is also a bump in on the back on the first floor on both sides. I believe it comes in six to eight inches to also uh, have that delineation from the historic footprint to, uh, to the addition. I, I think the largest uh, and, and most uh, complicated issue that we're gonna have moving forward is uh, in working with the owner, we're going to peel back the siding. I asked him to expose some of the siding that was under the vinyl and he provided some referencing this evening. But I think as he gets into it, we're gonna have to work together to have a successful project as well. Um, th that's uh, conditions that should be addressed in the motion if it's to move forward. So uh, that concludes my portion. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you, Ron. Move on to the public comment period. If there's anyone in the room who would like to speak for or against this project, you may do so at this time. See no one. We'll move on to um, commissioners' questions. So we'll start on my right this time with Mr. Sutton. I'm just going to throw an item out. I understand your desire. Uh, for differentiation uh, and how that uh, fits with your discussions with staff. Um, and you've decided to do it in two different ways. One is your siding exposure and one is your window profile, if you want to call it that. Um, I think that owing to the fact uh, that uh, uh, this is all being done to the primary structure. Have you considered doing only one of those? Uh, we would be happy to do just one of them. Honestly, this is just feedback that we were preparing for as best as possible for your meeting. Um, if you said we'd like those windows to be consistent, we'd be more than happy to do it. If you said we'd like the wood detail to be consistent, we would do that as well. I mean, we understand. It certainly understand the nature of the historic and trying to showcase the differences between this structure and the existing. We are well receptive to uh, a consistency in any of those options okay. if they're available to us. Now, if I recall correctly, the siding uh, you're approaching here, I believe, is a hardy board. No, this will be wood. This is all wood? All wood, yes. Okay. So yeah, the hardy board is in our accessory structure, and our understanding is we will, we would not be approved if we were to use hardy board on this existing okay. structure. Uh, the reason why I bring that question up is that as you begin to peel off the uh, uh, the vinyl siding, it's like, what what are you going to find underneath uh, it? Understood. So at that point, let's uh, just to play the devil's advocate, if you're going to be replacing siding on an existing piece of fabric for the contributing structure, that has to be wood. Okay. Absolutely. No questions asked. So uh, one of the items that you might... Tend, uh, intend to do is is to start sourcing an appropriate material uh, because uh, a good siding is not easy to find these days. I will uh, pass on further question at this moment. Mr. Taylor. So my line of questioning is going to go to the stairwell first. Sure. Um, the proposed one or the existing? Well, I, it's, it's more in line the end result question here is regarding the actual height of your roof line. And the questioning is, has anyone done a calculation yet on that stairwell to, to be able to tell us how far or can it be done by keeping that roof line down to the original height? If not, how far are we off? Yeah, I, the, we proposed, obviously that was a comment that the staff made about about it, and that was the one feed pushback the architect was making. We're here as a, you know, as a homeowner trying to push forward with uh, this project, and 
Um, if there's any indication, we, we can propose that back. That can be a condition, something that we can try to resolve. I don't have that answer um, candidly. Uh, we're not married to that height at that portion, but we understand, I, I'm hoping in, in good faith that the, the architect is making that recommendation because it's something out of a necessity more than a need because we don't necessarily need a peak at that exact position of a stairwell for any, you know, for any need of ours. But, um, but to answer the question, we can get you an answer on it from the architect and um, we can find exactly uh, either the compromise or whatever is necessary. Is there anywhere on the plans that tells us what that height difference is currently? I believe. There should be something. If I could blow that up. Not that I, not that I'm aware of, or not that I could read off the top of my head. There's a nine foot, one foot, eight foot to the existing. Yeah, it's really hard for us to see. Yeah, so, I almost have so to plan up. So, what is the height on your existing? Is there a way I can blow well, this? Well, unfortunately, that up. rear is still probably going to that rear. Yeah, I was wondering if center. I can blow this up for you. I have the. I also have the plan set as a PDF that maybe I can zoom out. This is on a PowerPoint. We can zoom in. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was going to try to back into the answer, but no. Um, right, probably any of these to show, see if there's the height. It looks to be there's quite a calculation bit. on the side there. Top one is eight. But I, yeah, does that help at all? <laughs> not really. It's just blurry. Yeah. Uh, there's not an overall height that I can see. No. It's all blurry. It's six these. foot eight. Is, is there possible? I have that other PDF on the USB. The, to the top of the wall, but there's no there's no peak there's no dimension. Overall. Okay. Yeah. Second, the most okay. important, important thing here is that there's no section through that. Yeah, I think the biggest comment, I think collectively, is that it's set back behind the existing structure in a way that it'll be very hard to visually see that from uh, the street as well. Obviously, we, um, but I don't have that in the plan set details, but the, the architect can probably get us that answer. Okay. The only other quick question I have right now is these additional gable vents, are they working gable vents or are they faux? Faux, the existing ones? I well, believe no, they're... no, the, what you're proposing, didn't I see some in the new? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm assuming they're faux. And this kind of shows you at least that front elevation as far as this is existing already and you can see on the back tier where that little bump up is. Maybe shown better here. So it's not substantially taller. Which is, which is where we've ended up in the entire lane across length. Okay, that's all I have for now. Okay. Um, can you go to what you call the right elevation? Mm -hmm. And again, is there a way to make these a little bigger and not have the preview on the side? Yeah, the I do have the plan set instead of this. Well, no, the PowerPoint presentation is fine if we get rid of the preview. Oh, okay, gotcha. Just pull the bar over on the left. See that little screen there? If you hover your icon. cursor. Mm -hmm. There you go. You have your there you go. go. Bingo. Okay. Um, there you go. Don't move. <laughs> um, 
Thank you. Yep. The um, the two windows to the far right of the addition. Um, I actually I love the three grouping of the three windows. Mm -hmm. The three squares. The rectangular ones just look way out of whack. Okay. And and you might talk to your architect about considering making them you know small pairs of squares or something else like that to kind of. Consistent, maybe, yeah. Yeah, the horizontal window is is just a little too much out of character. Let me check on the left if, and on the other side. Yeah, I think it makes sense to put them as a square. Um, and you mentioned something about the rear deck railing matching, the new rear, rear deck railing matching the scale and proportion from the front porch. And I understand you wanting, wanting them to be compatible, but again, maybe if the front porch rail pickets are two inches square, two and a half inches square, making them slightly different, like we were, you know, sure. you, you already acknowledged that the, the exposure of the siding is different and they're set back by six to eight inches, which is the addition is set back from the main built. That's all perfect. That's all the right way to do things is to distinguish them with plane changes and then with slight material changes that are comp, you know, comparable. Um, but, uh, somebody's eye 25 years from now will walk up and go, well, this is clearly not original. This is original. This wasn't, you know, yep. that, that's, that's e doing it all the right way. Easy enough. Um, and are there any brackets on the additions? And I'm, I'm going to make the same point about the brackets on the addition be compatible, but perhaps slightly different than the original historic brackets. Sure, I, I think we have them as matching the existing, but if there are some sm uh, small deviations, I think we can incorporate that. I, again, they, yeah. they, they, can just be, they can be minor, just so they're not exact copies of historic Understood. material. That's all I have. Mr. Myers. Um, as I was looking at the 1929 uh, Sanborn map, there's a pretty substantial difference between between your house, uh, the front of it, as it as it seems to be uh, shown in that map, and these really oddly muscular brick columns in, that you have in the front. This is a really interesting house, and I think it has. I think the, it's very possible that the, those kind of wacky big brick columns were added at some point after the initial construction. So you're just entering into a long history of you know, making changes to this house. <laughs> it might even be that your pop-up was not there initially. I, I, it's very difficult to know. Sure. So with that in mind, I think this is a very good presentation and I thank you, you did a, you did a good job, right? It's well prepared. And um, you have made, and it, it's always difficult for us because there's a, this is a big addition, but you've, you've done all the right stuff. You came to staff, you asked them, they, you know, they gave, they gave some guidance based on what happens a lot in the area with the, uh, with the cruciform, you know, second story, you've made some compromises that was stuff that you thought initially, you know, you came in and you were, you were flexible. So I really want to compliment you on that. And in fact, I have no further questions. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Um, can we go to your, your, <laughs> your right elevation again? Yep. Please. Thank yep, you. Yep. Yep. Let me get rid of this uh, sidebar again for you. So um, I wanted to ask before, but I wanted to let my colleague finish sure. with his points. Um, why is the existing window on the left side of the pop-up, why is that being removed? Sorry, the, which existing window? If uh, you look right this, above the last brick column of the front portion of the home, the, the big column by that stair that you're getting rid that, of. That's this right here? No, 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 no. Oh. Just, just follow the column up. The big column, not the little tiny thing that belonged to the stair. This Follow that guy, guy up. Yep. See where, that where, single window there? Why is that? That up? currently is sitting over the stairs, over the current stair landing. 
And I believe with the relocation of the new stairs, I let me go to the plan set. Yeah, I would really it might appreciate be easier that. To see Thank that. you. Because I don't think it's not our goal to remove any windows if we can keep them. So let me just right show there. you show you what the plan. So this is where so there's laundry lives below. You're taking the stairs up, and then the second floor. Yeah, don't. So, so those are the three windows. And I, where's the where's the original one on the right? that I'm talking about. Yeah, so there's a window right here over this set of stairs. But there's one south and of And there's that, one right? right here at the bedroom too. So why is that being removed? There is no stair there. Oh, You're see. keeping the bedroom exactly where it is. Understood. Um, so me... if, if you can retain it, can you retain it? Yes, I can. We can live with that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yay. Uh. So it's basically right, right here up right at this portion, correct? Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know anybody who would take windows out of a bedroom anyway. Correct. It may yeah. be just an inaccuracy on, right. on the architect's side. But. Okay. Then. Good eye. <laughs> All those years of college mm -hmm. and dollars spent. Um, okay, so I got that one. There was something else. Oh, talking about the windows. So I got a little lost in your um, history of the windows. You mm -hmm. replaced every single window yeah. in 2020, right? There's yep. not one historic window left. Correct. So are the new windows going in? Or are they going to match those? So we were going to have... A, so everything on the new was going to be a different window because we thought recommended that maybe <laughs> yes to you. yes yes so as you, let me show you the i guess one of these formats this is probably easier way to see it so all of these with the the three crosshairs up top those are new those are the 2020 windows right. and everything that's single is the that would be the 2024 or 2025 window okay I just want to understand. Under, understood. Because I, I got confused. I, I know yeah. That. So, Staff again, if there was a condition of, hey, we would love you to keep those windows consistent with your newer windows for that uniform, and the only variation is the siding, the cladding, and these things, we're, we're receptive to it. We were only here to try to adhere to, um, you know, to, to make sure we were conformed to the idea of making sure okay. it felt separate. Okay, one more thing. Um, the window, the single window that's next to the chimney on the second floor, uh, in the rendering, somehow it lost its three. It's three, yeah. It's three at the top. It needs its three. Just an error. Yep. Okay. It's a different window in a different place. Uh, did it get moved, relocated yeah, in the plan? Not can we the look same at your window. plan? You're right. Let's look at the plan. Hold on. Uh, can we go back to your second floor plan? <coughs> Sorry, second. <laughs> because if it didn't bend, sometimes it won't. Move. Well, one of the things that happened is that the architect had this set forward, yep. and then we moved it back, and there could be some things that they didn't can we, make. Can we look at your second floor plan again? I just mm -hmm. want to make sure. Yep. yep. I agree. I, I was just talking to one of my fellow commissioners. We're, we're architects, and we, we use similar software, and we understand sometimes when you're making revisions, the revisions don't always follow. Translate. <laughs> right. Well, we will get there. Okay. So if you just hit the PowerPoint screen again, yep. Uh, I can't tell. Can't read them. Yeah. So this showing this shows right here. This it has an egress window. And this has existing window, existing window. So that one, the one comment you had was. Where did this bedroom three window go if it's yep. shown in this one? So he's he he's but, replacing it with an egress window because you didn't have one that was compliant. That might be the case, yeah. Yeah. Where there they weren't code windows or some version of it where they're okay. swapping them out. Um that is oh, the other question I do have is um the mechanical equipment you're switching to the other side of the house. Mm -hmm. Are they behind a fence? Are they being screened in any way? Um, they're not shown in a manner that they're screened, but um, if my wife is here, she would say screen them. So, um, can we look um, at the site plan? Yeah, <laughs> please, sir. So, let me show you. Sorry. Oh, that's right. This thing. 
everything is so light, it's hard to see, too. Do you have the site plan on the printout? Yes. Because that was the thing about your site plans on the PowerPoint. They're so light. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Commissioners, as he's yes. looking for that, this is Ron Veal. I'm staff for the historic preservation. The window modification was twofold. One was to show the original placement of the windows to the 2023 window placement. The other one is that the windows that were replaced in 2020 had the GBGs. Usually we have the grills outside that are simulated and the windows that are there are just the, the, the grills that are in between the glass. So that's something okay. that we usually don't approve. Yep, this printout's probably not Thank you. showing it to you, but right there, this is where there's a package AC in it and then there's uh, pool equipment and uh, gas meter. And so the intent here is that these would all be relocated in this portion here, and then uh, certainly can do some sort of uh, fencing or facade that you wouldn't see it. There currently is a set of stairs that goes up into the mother-in-law suite that kind of angles here. So we wanna be you know, courteous of how that experience looks. Do you, do you have a fence, an existing fence on the property right now? Yeah, there Where is, is that? the Can neighbor, that so out? the neighbor, this neighbor here, there's a wrought iron fence that runs the whole course of this sideline. Okay. And then uh, there's a wood fence on the alleyway that um, kind of runs a little bit and pulls back in where the pool is. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, uh, a wood fence that we have that's only on the backyard that separates the apartment from our side. And uh, it ends basically right, uh, right here, right okay. past that, before the AC and, and after the electric. And then at the front on the other side. The front it's at the it's right next to the um, patio or the porch deck. Okay. And we talked about the staff of maybe relocating. You know, if it was best to relocate, we're not necessarily in love with having. You know, it's there. It's only there for protection because we have dogs. But you know, if, if there was a thought process of pushing those both on the backside, we're we're receptive to that as well. Well, you, but you are retaining a, a fence. I yeah, think. yeah. The whole perimeter, the whole backyard is contained and protected. So then the mechanical units would be behind that. Okay. Yeah, you wouldn't see any of the right now. The only thing that you can see from the front is the the package unit AC that's on the carport. Okay. Which will be in the room. Okay. All right. That is it for my questions. Any other questions? I just got one quick one for staff um, on this rear wall that we're seeing with the demolition plan. We'll you know, re be removing some of that historic fabric. Is there anything there that we should maybe look at trying to save, or is it not worth? You're asking me? Well, I'm, I'm asking staff, staff first, <laughs> and then it's going to go to potentially sure. you. Sure. So can you be specific on that? And can you point to it on an elevation? Because so I'm not you, following So if you it. bring up the rear photo. Here, if we put that PowerPoint. I'm yep. assuming we're losing some of that. I think Ron's got the actual rear photo. I know that it's currently covered with vinyl siding. I'm just wondering if there's a opportunity here maybe to use some of that. What you're talking about here. That's it. So See, all, all this is cladded in vinyl. The soffits are cladded in vinyl. Uh, all the all the casings are, are are cladded in vinyl as well. So we have a window back here that. That's a new window. That's yeah, a yeah, I believe was part of you know a, a prior renovation before it was a district, and and this door is a, a vinyl door too. I don't believe there's any fabric that is exposed. Once we get underneath the the, the veneer that's here, then we could look at some of the historic material which is the only reason I started with you on that question because the only thing I really saw was maybe some wood siding because the windows given the circumstances of this just coming into the district yep. obviously those windows are no longer historic so um, that's something that we can discuss and but again is that something that you would be 
Absolutely. Yeah. Anything that we're removing that doesn't that has value to you, which doesn't have any value to us in this edition, is absolutely available. Well, well that that isn't actually the reason why we're asking that. It's not going <laughs> to give it to a stockpile because the city doesn't There's a stockpile store in materials. A museum. I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing there. <laughs> so typically. Um, and Ron, you can answer this if you want to, but typically if there's like, if there is citing material under there that is original, that is in good shape, and you you pull off all the other citing, all the other vinyl citing, and you find that there are pieces or there are areas of original citing that you need to repair, replace, you may have Jesus. good stock hidden in the places you're going to demo. And then you and your construction crew and architect are the ones that would determine can, we can, can we use those in those places. And then you don't have to go out and find somebody to cut you a piece with a die, you know, that <laughs> they're going to have a hard time finding maybe. I mean, most of these houses share similar profiles. So if somebody has already made that sighting, they, they'll know that in the industry. But that's typically why we ask those oh, questions. I'd rather just donate it to you guys. But yeah. no worries. We'll no. Well, <laughs> the city says no, thank you. <laughs> we have no storage. <laughs> Per Mr. Vila's comment of this all going to be perfect anyway when you take that vinyl off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said it was going to be um, perfect. You won't have to worry about it, but experience is telling me it's probably not going to be. So that siding that's currently there, and as long as it's long enough, I mean, you do have a lot of cuts potentially there because of the windows and the doors and different layout. But <clears throat> if there is something there that could be used, that siding is going to match your existing home better than any other siding out there as long as it's in good shape so that was kind of the reason for the line understood no i appreciate it any other questions for the for the owner I have none, none? So, um you have five minutes for rebuttal so you can enter anything into the record if you feel like you need to answer or respond to anything that was said or questioned no i'm, I'm good i think our, all the comments are great and we're we're here to walk through this process so. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll go ahead and close the public portion of the hearing, and we will discuss the case. Comments? Concerns? Motions? We, I don't remember seeing very, very many, if at all, such a substantial change to an existing primary structure. I think that's structure. the most significant thing about this project. It is. Is it, that when the recognition was that wow now i've now i've got to to work with a historic district and its mm -hmm. guidelines yep. and uh in spite of it being a, a substantial change to this primary i think it's done very sensitively in many respects in very many respects um to, to my liking you know i i understand where he's going with the siding and i think that's an appropriate way to handle this particularly when we are dealing with uh, edge condition boards, both inside and outside corners, yeah. that help differentiate that. That works out very well for that sort of a scheme. Windows, there isn't an existing window fabric here. I could see very easily having all the windows substantially look similar in, in their nature, you know, providing that they're uh, of a construction that is appropriate for the district. Right, which the, the interior Mullions aren't. Which the interior are not. Right. So we don't want to duplicate that. No. We don't want to pro proliferate that. But, but, but the three over one with exterior mullions would work out just fine. It would. Um, but the addition, since none of those, there's no original windows anywhere no. in the property. I'm thinking so, about uniformity here now. But, but I think the addition being one over one is just fine. For personally. I mean, mm -hmm. without having... Again, we're, we're, we're adding fake historic mullions. There's no point, honestly. I think that's, that's pushing. If the original replacement windows had exterior mullions, what would, you, what would we recommend? We'd recommend that the new ones not mm -hmm. have, that, that, that we would change the pattern. So. And since they're interior, uh, you can't do. We, we we don't want that duplicated. So I think the no mullions is the is kind of like the most logical thing to do. If we put exterior mullions on the addition, 
or suggested that, it might look like the addition was the original. And the rest of the house with the interior mullions were later changed. Right. I don't, I don't think it, it doesn't follow logically in my opinion. Um, I, I do want to just say that I, I think the extent to which this owner altered their desired plan and intended, you know, ideas on how they were going to add to and expand this house to conform with historic guidelines and the Secretary of Interior Standards is absolutely commendable. That, you know, they, they changed everything they wanted to do, basically, and changed the whole configuration of the, of the addition and the renovation um, after reading, and it's clear the owner actually read clear the the guidelines himself and didn't just leave it up to his architect so I'm um, I'm that's something to be commended it really is not many owners come in here with that level of education and understanding and uh, able to present that without their architect or their contractor so thank you any other comments or concerns you should I mean, the presentation was for 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 him to get up there and say that, hey, I'm not an architect, I'm not a contractor. That well, was pretty complete. So thank you. Um, on the windows, we're going to deal with this now, kind of moving forward. Anything that, obviously, in this little pocket, that they didn't have to get approved six, seven, well, I guess, what, nine months ago. Uh, and, and potentially there's even projects going on right now that were permitted before that, that happened in January. So for the next so many years, we're going to deal with probably a lot of this. Um, and, and so, yeah, we would never have, as a, as a commission, approved what is there as far as the windows but then I kind of agree with Commissioner Sutton here on the keeping it kind of uniform. So I, I, I can see both sides given the circumstances. Uh, and I, I just, I don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way here. Maybe it's just a well, discussional. The right way was we make them replace every single window in the house and put wood windows, wood <laughs> windows back. <laughs> You know, well, unfortunately, we can't models. do that. I know. So, I know. But that's the um, right thing to do. <laughs> the only other comment was it, it looks to me like that, that secondary roof ridge line is going to be somewhere around a foot and a half or so higher than the original house is currently. Um, I will say they have done a very good job of, of hiding it. it. It doesn't just really come at you like a, some other designs that we've seen previously and, and with other projects did. Uh, I'm never a big fan of that line being higher, being able to see it from the street. And I would like the architect to maybe visit that area and see if, is there any possible way to get there. I, I realize as, as a contractor trying to meet that code trying to lay those stairs down and, and you may run out of, of distance left to right now rather than up and down. Um, but it, it, it would at least be worth exploring uh, because in the end, I think you as the homeowner may even be happier with the end product as well. Uh, but by being able to keep that the same sight line as you currently have it. Uh, but other than that, I mean, the project is, is, you know, looks to be right in line with, with what you would expect with a project like this. And the finished product, I think, is going to be an addition to the neighborhood. And consistent with precedent, too. I agree. Like I say, the only, the only real difference here in what we normally see is the windows, and that's because they were done in 2020. Mm -hmm. before this was okay. part of the district. Yeah, the 
windows are personally I think you know the um, the three over the one they're they're already um, not original and just to tie it all together it would point out that they're more alike than dissimilar if they were three over ones as well obviously without the interior uh, mullions but um, it just seems to me if they're already doing that with the siding, then the windows themselves can be tied together more closely as not historic that way. Because once you do make them different, then you do get into that conversation of what is what is original, what is not, in my in my mind. So let's just make them all not original. They're not all original anyway. <laughs> but would we approve? This an is, interior mullion. No, I'm not saying approve an interior mullion. You're saying, okay. I'm saying they still have to meet our guidelines, but they could do the three over the one. If they chose to. Yes. If they chose to. If they chose to. But the windows and the, the way the windows were installed, that's the other thing, is that the way the windows are installed in the walls <coughs> are done per our typical recommendation when it comes to how they are set in the wall and we get the shadow play in the opening, mm -hmm. right? So as long as they're installed the way that we prefer in the districts and the windows themselves are, are more in keeping with um, the way that we would see mullions, right? But basically we're saying, is it, is it it's, that it's, it's, it's a owner. visual, it's a visual uh, alignment with the existing non-historic. So hard to say it without like, getting into a tongue twister. Yes. But they'd still look drastically different. To, the, to the, the learned to the eye, the yes. The interior to exterior emollients look completely different. If you look at those interior emollient windows at any kind of an angle, you can't see the emollients. The, the glass reflects everything off and you can't tell that there are mullions inside that window at all. The only time you can see them is at night with the lights on. Well, when you're inside the house, you do see the difference. And then if you are, yeah, we're if, not you are in, we're not, if you are 90 degrees to the plane of the window. We're not litigating anything view from an interior No, I know house. that. I know that. But if you were 90 degrees to the view, you would see them. The thing is, is that most of these are going to be at sight lines that you wouldn't even see truly anyway. Right. And they're all black and they're dark. And right. from a daytime standpoint, you can't see those mullions hardly at all. In a photograph, you can't see them. Um, I see them pretty clearly in the shadow of the porch, so. <laughs> you know, well, that's because they have a white awning or they have a white um, curtain behind them. If there was no white curtain behind them, you'd never see the mullions. I'm just, I'm just saying, I don't think, I think it's owner's choice, certainly. I agree, it is owner's choice. And okay. if the owner really likes a three over one, they can do it, but it has to but be. they have to do it. In with, a version with, that is compliant with, with our district guidelines. And, and inset, regardless and, 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 of which. And the windows need yes. to be inset, right? Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So basically, coordinate the staff. <laughs> yes. Well, they have to coordinate the staff anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other uh, points? None. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a motion to entertain at this point? Um, I will accept any amendments, by the way, from <laughs> fellow commissioners. Um, I'll just say that going in. Um, so I move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings uh, presented at this, drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 23-298 for the property at uh, 406 South Newport Avenue in Tampa, Florida, because uh, uh, with the following conditions. Um, that uh, the owner and the architect revisit uh, any reduction in the peak of the stairwell roof height if possible, and that the owner and architect coordinate with staff as to the desired window configuration on the addition, uh, that the rear deck railing be slightly different in scale and proportion from the front porch rails, that the horizontal windows on the right elevation 
be revisited and, and considered changed. Um, because based upon finding a fact, the proposed project is uh, consistent with the high park design guidelines in the city of Tampa for the following reasons um, that the uh, the drawings reflect uh, compliance with the high park design guidelines and the secretary of interior standards I have a second can I ask one quick question um, a few things that you mentioned in your discussion screen the AC the, the AC is the actually going to be, fence. it has the existing, yep. The retaining the window over the back column on the right elevation, the window that was not on the drawing. Yeah, we probably do need to add that in there. Again, if and I say that. Sorry. <laughs> that, that I, I had a note here that, that uh, for the owner and the architect to retain as many of the existing windows in their current locations as well, possible. I, th I think you have to specifically call that one out because I think it's an error in the drawing, yeah. but I think that one right. has to be. It's bedroom three, I think both I think sides. the bedroom three windows, both windows on either side yeah. elevations needed to be looked at and make sure that they were correct. I think yep. the drawings may be in error. And did you wish for them to vary the brackets somewhat from the original brackets in the new construction? Yes. Um, that the uh, that any um, brackets on the addition be varied slightly from the existing bracket. I'll second that motion. Okay. Sorry. All those in favor, please state I and raise your hand, indicating so. Um, Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm sorry. We typically ask, and I forgot to do this in the other one. Do you understand all the conditions that were put forth here tonight? Yes. And do you understand um, that in order to move forward, those have to be accepted by you? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And the motion carries. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know where that USB is, but it's okay. Yeah, I don't need check, it. Check the paper. Thank you. Yes. Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Vila, I'm staff with Historic Preservation. Our next agenda item is ARC 23-202. This is for the address of 505 and 505 and a half Palm Avenue. This is in the Tampa Heights Local Historic District. The primary structure is a contributing structure that dates back to 1945. The underlying zoning is RM24. There's uh, multiple requests attached to this. The first, there's a variance, a rear yard setback reduction from 20 foot to 15 foot with an encroachment for two feet for eaves and gutters. We're going to hear the variance first. The agent is aware that he is going to uh, present the variance uh, through the site plan and discussion, and then there'll be a motion. If that moves forward, then we'll go into the certificate of appropriateness for an addition to the primary structure and a second primary structure on the site with site improvements. Going through the photo presentation, once again, we start with the 1929 Sanborn map. Area in question is highlighted in the green parcel. It is a corner parcel on the corner of Palm and Central. This is looking from above. Once again, the property in question is highlighted. With the green, you see the proximity to the interstate. Going to the subject site, this is the primary structure. The secondary structure is a non-contributing structure. But you see the cladding of brick. It's a one-story structure that faces Palm Avenue. This is the relationship from the primary structure to the uh, secondary structure with Palm Avenue in the foreground. This is looking from the interior to the site, back up Palm Avenue, this is the contributing structure on the left. A couple of street shots. This is looking down Palm to the east. And turning around, looking down Palm Avenue to the west. Directly across the street, you have a vacant structure and then a period structure behind that. 
just to the east of the subject site. You have a period structure. And just focusing back at the subject site, this is the primary structure. This is the west elevation. And some uh, different perspectives of that elevation as well. And just zooming in a little bit here. That concludes this portion. As I stated, the agent is going to address the variance first. And I have a handout for, for you to follow. This is the hardship criteria that he put into the record. Good evening, Ralph Schuler, 2401 North Howard Avenue. I have been sworn. My last name is S-C-H-U-L-E-R. So we'll go over the variance first. First of all, just want to orient you a little bit with, as Ron stated, we are on the southeast corner of North Central Avenue and, uh, let me zoom out a little bit, there, here we go, North Central Avenue and Palm. To the north we have an empty lot, to the east we have an empty lot, to the south is, is all owned DOT property for a future expansion to the malfunction junction. To, to the east, there is one additional accessory, uh, one additional structure to, uh, to the east. And then again, the interstate picks up. What we were, are trying to accomplish here, south of Palm, for, for those of you who are aware of Tampa Heights, the, the zoning changes dramatically. Uh, there's been proposals in front of you over the last two years for townhouse developments, very urban single family house developments on skinny lots. This is a very large, large lot. Obviously it's a hundred by 120. It's a double lot um, with a contributing structure that kind of sits in the middle of it, frankly. Uh, the house was built in 1946, post-World War II house. It's, uh, it's a unique house in that I lived in the neighborhood 25 years. I again drove the whole neighborhood this week just to see if I could find anything that looked even remotely like this house doesn't exist. The closest thing I have is a house built in the early 60s that's a tri-level house, just for example. This is, this is a house three blocks north on, on um, Central Avenue. That's the closest house I've ever I, I found in the neighborhood. So it's a unique house. It's a nice, nice house, but it doesn't really fit any, any of the rest of the fabric of the neighborhood. So the variance specifically is what we're trying to do is a very large lot with a, a contributing structure on it in, a, in, a, in an extremely densifying part of the neighborhood. This is uh, a zoning of R93, second most dense zoning in city of Tampa. CDB is, has no zoning. The R100 is the, is the most intense zone. So we're trying to respectfully add, a, add some more value to the property with another, uh, um, what would appear to be hopefully more of an accessory structure, although it is because of its size considered a second primary structure. The variance we're asking for is this rear yard setback from, 15, from 20 to 15. And all of this land is vacant land, it's owned by the DOT. I went to a DOT uh, hearing about a month ago because I live in a neighborhood live a block away. And the proposed, what the uses are currently, is a dog park and pickleball courts. So that's what's going to be south of here. Um, 25 or 30 years ago, who knows? Maybe it would be more interstate. But currently, that's what's being proposed. So we feel it's extremely advantageous or, or normal or uh, consistent to, to ask for a small five foot reduction, which is then we're going to use a tandem parking space. We will have required two off street parking spaces for the secondary structure, which will be uh, two parking spaces behind the, the face of the primary, second primary structure, which would be a parking space here and a parking space there. Um, I, can, I can go over the criteria. So again, the re request is reduced from 20 to 15. Um, we, 
we we are at basically a five foot eave to eave here. Can't go any further north. We we are a fair, fairly skinny structure at 24 feet to make make the project work. 24 feet is about as, as skinny as we can get and, and get some some idea of a shared space and and uh, not make it a shotgun. Uh, there are no immediate neighbors. FDOT owns owns it to the to the south. This outside the historic district, frankly, is a design exception. It's within the realm of a design exception through zoning. I've I've asked for design exceptions many times outside the historic district for uh, for from 20 to 15, and it's a and it's a and it's a non-public hearing, non-variance request. Um, again, the the this is in extremely dense zoning in an urban situation where uh, this is uh, kind of a suburban sitting house sitting in an, what is now becoming an intensely developing urban area in Tampa Heights. You just approved a seven story, 320 unit townhouse, I'm sorry, 320 unit apartment building, two blocks to the west of this, one block to the south is being finished townhouse development that is zero lot line with the PD. We can certainly PD this property, but I think that's a waste of money and time for everyone to PD this property. So I think this is a reasonable request. Um, it would, it would for grant the owner substantial justice and public benefit for him to be able to use his property uh, at the size and, and square footage that we have here for an addition, uh, secondary unit. So with that, um, I'll take any questions on the variance. we don't have a staff report we do allow for public comment at this point forgive me but I'm a little rusty hi I'm the, my name is Demi and Obergallon I'm one of the neighbors at 2008 North Central have you been sworn in sir I haven't we need to get you sworn in I do. And then yeah. um, your address, please. 2008 North Central. And you have three minutes, so. Um, I won't take your valuable time. <laughs> Just wanted to let you know, I do support, if you, if you kind of look at the orientation of the property and what's gonna be there, I do support additional structures in that area. Um, it's kind of sparse right now. I mean, you know, past that, you're just gonna see like an open field and, and dog park. And um, I think it really would add to his current property and the look of that, because you have a vacant lot to one side, and then you know behind that, there's gonna be like a dry pond and a dog park. Um, I think the addition of, of what is being proposed would really add to the neighborhood, so I support it. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other um, audience members? Yes, sir. I've been sworn in. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Perlega. I'm uh, a new resident to Tampa Heights. So we need we need the spelling of your name and oh, your address. Sure. Thank yeah. you. Perlega, P-R-O-L-E-I-K-A. And my address is 2204 North Central Avenue, number three. <clears throat> and like I said, I've been a um, short-time resident here in Tampa Heights. Um, come to know a lot of the people in the community, come to really take um, appreciation for the structures, the new construction that's going on in the area. A lot of things that, that Ralph men mentioned were very salient points about the new construction, how there's zero lot lines. Um, not something that I, th that I think particularly that I'm a fan of, but I think what they're proposing to do there with that corner being as sort of vacant as it is, doesn't seem like anything that would be any more obtrusive than some of the other construction that's going on in the neighborhood. So. I, I do stand in support of what Ralph and Kevin are trying to achieve with their property on <clears> home. <throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other audience members? Seeing none, we will go ahead and uh, move on to the commissioners asking questions. We'll start with Mr. Taylor today for this one. Could we just in the beginning just get you to go through the hardship criteria? 
summarized all the hardship earlier, but I can go specific one by one. Thank you. Number one, the request is to reduce the rear setback from 15 to 20, I'm, from, I'm sorry, from 20 to 15, to construct a second dwelling unit on the property site and existing building placement does not allow for off street and new dwelling uh, unit with the required five foot eave to eave buffer based on the existing rear yard dimensions. The request is minimum, the minimum is a minimum with the minimum width billing being proposed. Basically, this is as skinny as we can get it to, for it to work, and this is the least amount of, of uh, setback that we're requesting. Two, the existing building is located in the middle of the lot. Again, uh, FDOT owns all the property to the south, no neighbors to the south, only vacant land for interstate expansion. Uh, number three, the immediate neighbors to the south is, is FDOT. Proposed uses are dog park and pickleball courts. There are no neighbors. For the 25% reduction requests are allowed generally under the design exception through zoning staff without a variance. Outside the historic district, I understand we are in the historic district, thus the reason why we're asking for a variance. The comprehensive plan is encouraging density in the south of Palm Avenue with a future land use designation of R93. This site, uh, is, this is the most second, uh, most densely zoning district outside of the central business district. The request is to add only a single accessory structure in scale, although yes, by definition, it's still a secondary, second main structure. And um, it's kind of a large suburban lot, but the, again, because the house is sited in, in, a, in a particular way, it, there's just not enough room to, to make it work. And then last, while considered the Second primary structure that is intended to act more as a, an accessory structure in its scale. Those are my responses. Thank you. So my first question would be in reference to the sizing of, of the design. Your answer to hardship number one basically is saying that the building cannot be designed any smaller? Well, what I'm saying is, is for it to be functional and, and a design that, um, that to go to 20 feet or not for uh, a variance request would, would, would be an undue hardship to, to, to the design of the, of the building, yes. Okay, but I, I guess what I'm trying to, to get you to answer here is by choosing to make the building the size that you're choosing to use it so that it can function the way that your client is trying to get it to function, would you not agree that you are choosing to make it that size, which is making you have to ask for the variance? I disagree. Okay. The property that is adjacent, that's owned by the DOT. Correct. Yes, yes, sir. Have, is that property in some, I mean, could they sell it? I mean, it could, but I've, once FDOT buys a piece of property, they never sell their property, ever. But have <laughs> you seen any documentation that has this one to where it cannot be sold? <laughs> Uh, sir, I don't. I, I haven't specifically talked to an administrator at the FDOT about if they ever have sold the property. Okay. No. All right. I think that's all I have for now. Mr. Prokop. I've got no questions at this time. Mr. Myers. What is it? What is the required setback from Central Avenue for any? So the required setback is seven feet because it's considered a side yard setback. The front of Palm is considered the front based from zoning, mm -hmm. seven, seven, and 20. So you've, so you have set the, you've set the front wall of this, of your, um, Second dwelling at seven feet? No, sir. There's an open front porch mm -hmm. that's at seven feet, and then the main body of the structure is at 
13. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Sutton. I have no question. Um, what is the uh, required separation between the, prim the original existing primary structure and this new secondary? It's five foot eave to eave, which is what's proposed. And is this proposed secondary primary, is that proposed as a two-story structure? Yes, it's proposed as a two-story structure. Okay. And it is to be a single residence or? Single residence, yes ma'am. Single residence. And what is the square footage at this time of the enclosed? Secondary, primary? Yeah, it's uh, approximately 1,400 square feet. 1,400 of livable space? Correct. And then the full square footage is the 1,800? Mm, no, the porch in the front and, two, and the porch in the back. I don't know the exact square footage. I apologize. Okay, because it does say 1,800 on our okay. sheet. Okay, yeah, then that is correct. So 1,400 livable enclosed. And are you also indicating um, a rear porch on the existing primary structure at this time? As, as part of the certificate of appropriateness, when we talk about that next? If, no, if, I, I know we're talking about that next, but... Yes, but there would be a, a proposed rear porch, correct. Okay, Currently I'm just looking not. at the adjacencies and how that might impact what, where we Yes, uh, so this is the five-foot eve to eve, and that's why there's this little bump. Okay. <laughs> All right, at this time I have no questions. Um, transportation reviewed this already? Because I yes, see the flares on your drive. They, they have no comments back on the proposed The site. only comment they had, which I think is really with more of a, on transportation was an ART comment that both, both, both cars would be behind the primary would phase. Would stack behind the primary phase. Correct. Correct, okay. All right, I have no further questions. Any other questions for the applicant at this time? None. You do have some rebuttal time, so if there's anything you'd like to add in before we close this portion. And discuss um, again, I think it's a, I think it's a reasonable request. I think it's a request that that is is, is rooted with um, with sensitivity in, in mind, and and that the, the the site does have limitations, which is the reason why we have requested the variance. Thank you. Thank you. I will right, we'll go ahead and close this portion of the hearing. I have one final final question. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead, and then he gets another rebuttal. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is an existing non-conforming, or is the uh, the non-contributing structure that exists on this site uh, is it also non-conforming in terms of its setbacks? Yes. So as you probably didn't notice, but this, that is not shown. It is, it is in extremely poor condition. I, I've, I, we've applied for a demo permit that's been accepted through the ARC already. Oh, it's a, it was a staff. Staff approved because it's non-contributing. Non right, it's non-contributing, so we But uh, many, many photos were su submitted. It's, it's amazing it's still standing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But is it, I had a question there though. That right. <laughs> is it non conforming or not? It's a non conforming structure, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it was, I don't know the year it was built, but it's considered non, non contributing. This, this is, again, we can talk about the, the balance of the project. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have another question? No, no, more, no more. Okay. No thank more. you. We'll go ahead and close <laughs> this portion and discuss the variance request um, among the commissioners. So um, they have to typically when a variant <coughs> comes before us, all six variance requirement or hardship criteria have to be established. 
and I don't think one and two are met. And we didn't ask the question, but possibly number four. Because it may meet Tampa comprehensive, but does it meet historic? But regardless. It sets a precedent. It does definitely set a precedent. And it, to me, number one, it definitely doesn't meet. I don't think the reasoning behind wanting to have an accessory dwelling unit is unjust or unsound here, but there are specific things that you're required to meet for the hardship criteria to be met. And it absolutely is not something that someone did to the property owner. Um, the fact that it's a two story and that it's 1400 square feet um, is very, very generous. Um, there are people who live in primary structures that are smaller than that. So to say that um, it's untenable to create something within the required setbacks, um, you know, if, if there had been options discussed and shown, and um, maybe that would have helped, but um, to say that you can't meet market demand with something slightly smaller or, or less wide, um, you'd have to you'd have to prove that, and you didn't. If I may pipe in for a moment, um, as usual, <coughs> as per my usual reading on this, I see that uh, fundamentally, uh, I understand the desire to increase the density where it is applicable and your zoning condition here allows that here for this site. Um, and I think that's a valuable thing to bring into uh, any discussion when you're looking at redevelopment on a piece of property. However, the proposal that we see before us clearly is of uh, an issue requiring a variance of your own making. Uh, and that's as we stand here with this site in its original configuration and its, and its classification. Um, I do not think that we would be having this kind of discussion if this were being brought to us as a PD proposal in redevelopment of the site in a more dense fashion. But we're not seeing that. You're asking for a variance. And because of that, I don't see you meeting that criteria, particularly for number one, very much particular for number two. And I'll grant you number four, sir. Because I can, I can see where, you, where that would be coming from as well. Um, the fact that there is vacant land entirely to the south of you is immaterial to the point where if a granting of a variance suggests to stuff more onto a piece of property is granted here, we open that door for everyone in Tampa Heights. And there is that consistency we need to look at for the protection of those property limits and those property rights throughout the district. Yeah, I, I, I fail to see a hardship. Um, in fact, I mean, just looking at the existing site plan here, the existing house, while lovely, um, the little piece that, that uh, juts out that creates the five foot separation, you know, if, if it was ultimately desired that this second house that had to be built on here had to be built at this dimension and had to be built at this mass and width, you know, the addition or the new building could be moved, I guess this is plan north um, and that piece of the original structure could be altered in such a way so that you could maintain the five foot separation. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's all, um, it's self-created hardship. I've lived in houses much narrower. <laughs> Any other comments, concerns that we should discuss? 
around. Should we entertain a motion at this time? I move for at the parents' request for ARC 23-202 for the property located 505 and 505 and a half East Palm Avenue in the Tampa Heights Historic District for a rear yard set, uh, setback change from 20 feet to 15 feet with two foot encroachment for eaves and gutters. Be denied due to the failure of the petitioner to meet the burden of proof with regard to the six hardship criteria set forth in section 27114D of the City of Tampa Code and Ordinances, specifically that um, the uh, alleged hardship or practical difficulties have not been shown to be unique and singular with respect to this property, that the hardship or practical difficulty does in, in fact result as a self-created hardship and that the variance is not in harmony and serves the general and purpose of intent of this chapter adopted in the comprehensive plan as a deviation from a normal planning of, of the historic district. I second. All in favor of the motion, please state aye and raise your hand indicating so. Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Schuler. Second. So we made a motion for a continuation of the appropriateness. <clears throat> That's correct. In order to preserve the notice chain, we need to continue the certificate of appropriateness. And uh, the available date would be October 2nd, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. Can I get a motion, please? What is I move to continue. I move to continue ARC 23-202. Uh, for the property at 505 East Palm Ave and 505 and a half East Palm Ave um, to the October 2nd, 2023 uh, Architectural Review Commission hearing at 5.30 p.m. I will second that motion. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand in case so. Aye. aye. Motion carries. Commissioners, good evening. Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. Our last agenda item is ARC 23-248. This is for the address of 1711 West Chaton Avenue. It's in the Hyde Park Historic District. Primary structure that is currently on the site dates back to 1917, and it is a contributing structure. The zoning is RM24. The request is for a certificate of appropriateness for an addition to the primary structure with site improvements. As we go through the uh, photo presentation, I just want to point out a couple of items. On the Sanborn map from 1929, you have a wraparound porch, which is a two-story porch, and then you have a two-story dwelling. As it goes to the rear of the property, you have a one-story open uh, transitional section of the house that comes from the outside to the inside, and it's open air. Currently, there is an addition that almost comes to the property line that's here, and it's going to be asked to be removed, but it does not show up on the Sanborn map, and I just wanted to illustrate that to you as you move forward. Uh, the primary structure does face Chaton, and you see the fabric here in 1929. <coughs> this is from above. It's the second structure in from the west off of Fremont and Chaton. There is an alley that runs east and west behind the subject site. This is the two-story gallery that uh, is indicated on the Sanborn map. Uh, the structure has been through many iterations. Uh, this area of Hyde Park has gone through a, a, a resurgence. There, the zoning is multifamily, as I stated. These larger homes uh, were broken up when there was a sprawl uh, out of the, the, the city and now is coming back to be single family, as indicated with this request. This is looking down the drive aisle to a gate, which is a pedestrian gate. Behind the gate, you have a deck that jets out. This is looking at that facade. This is the western facade. Obviously, this is the front. 
see the two-story volume and then how it telescopes in. And this is looking at the non-contributing structure on that west elevation or our abutting property line. This is looking at the east elevation. This is the portion of the house that comes almost to the property line that did not uh, show up on the Sanborn map. This is the front elevation here. And this is the abutting house on that uh, eastern property line. Some street shots. This is looking down Jatan to the east and turning around to the west. This is directly across the street, which is non-contributing multifamily. And then you see multifamily, which is a period structure here. This is moving to the rear. I wanted to show with the Sanborn map, this is, was the primary structure, two story. This was the portion that was open air was the transitional room. It's since been enclosed. They added a second story to, to that portion of the original footprint. And then they added this portion here that almost goes to the property line. And then lastly, the generous rear yard that they have here. And uh, that concludes the photo presentation and I have the owner to address the board at this time. Good evening, my name is Brad Berrios. My wife, Roya Berrios, is here with me. We own the property at 1711 West Jatan Avenue. Um, our contractor, Peter Carlin, is here. He's gonna go through the presentation in detail with the drawings with you. I just wanted to say a few words about our intentions with the renovation and the addition that we're requesting. Um, like the previous homeowner that we heard from today, we very much respect the neighborhood and the historic nature of it, and it's our goal to bring the property back as much as we can. Uh, it has been through a lot of iterations, none of which um, we actually performed ourselves. We bought the home in 2017, and I just wanted to show a couple photos. Um, as you can see, the home was covered, well, you may or may not be able to see it, but the home was covered in an aluminum siding, every inch of it, other than the first floor um, front facade which was the original three inch wood siding. Um, we have since torn down all of the aluminum. Um, you can see another couple shots here. Even the underside of the soffit was aluminum. Um, it was just kind of a mess. So we've uh, done you, you know, sort of a painstaking job of going through the home. Um, on the interior room by room as we can and we've tried our best to get the exterior up to the historic um, the look that, that the neighborhood deserves. We have put in a new front porch and the new front um, pillars with brick that I know we worked with Ron um, when we did that and now we're moving to the rear portion of the house. So um, uh, I will hand it over to Peter to, to give you the detail but um, I appreciate your time tonight, your consideration. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, Peter Carlin with uh, Carlin Construction, uh, representing uh, Brad and Roya Barrios. Um, address is 4230 South McDill, Tampa, Florida. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through the drawings, uh, starting with the site plan. So, <clears throat> okay, so, um, I don't know where the mic is, but, um, so this is the existing site plan. Um, I think Ron's pointed out that this is the, uh, the shaded area here is the compilation of multiple additions that have been made to the home to the original primary structure and the plan is to remove all of that because it's non-contributing and in pretty not great shape. <clears throat> the proposed addition is similar in footprint but does not violate the, uh, the property setback on this side. So we're, we're actually over the seven foot required and up to almost nine feet. 
but just to point out one more time, the part of what we're demolishing or proposing to demolish is, is about two and a half feet from the property line. <clears throat> Uh, the other site improvements, we're going to extend the, uh, the ribbon driveway back a little bit further and put in a new gate here. Uh, the, the AC equipment is currently located where I have my finger kind of like this little notch on the, uh, the primary residence. And more than likely, that's where the new air conditioning equipment will go or we may just replace some of that. That's sort of yet to be determined. Um, and this will be a two-story addition. Uh, there's not a whole lot of other site improvements. Uh, you know, we have an existing fence in the back that might be possibly replaced. We'll have to kind of assess the condition. If we do get approval after construction, that'll be our primary access to the back of the home. Um, so moving into the floor plans, uh, this is our first floor plan and the dashed areas are the uh, parts of the home that will get demolished and this is the section that's right up against the property line. And so the proposed first floor plan will have an, a, a large kitchen area with a breakfast nook and a laundry room with a pantry. <clears throat> And then we'll have an open air uh, covered porch on the first floor. And the second floor is a little section that we'll be removing at the top. We are going to, we are proposing to do some minor interior modifications to this part of the home. Pete, and you, can I'm, you push that over a little bit? Because oh, the, the news getting cut off. There Thank you. you. Is that better? Yep, okay. perfect. Thank you. Yep. So, and then the proposed second floor is primarily a, a master suite with a little bathroom addition for this bedroom here. <clears throat> and then moving to the uh, elevations, this is the, uh, the front elevation, which I think you've seen pictures of. It's got a first floor porch and then it's also got a second floor. Probably was a porch before. Uh, to the left, we have the existing uh, elevation um, of, the, of the rear of the home. And then to the right, we have the new elevation of the proposed two-story addition with the uh, uh, open-air porch. <clears throat> this is the east elevation. Again, existing. This section will be removed. And this is the proposed two-story addition. And then lastly, the west elevation. This is the uh, existing section. So you can kind of see the section that will get removed. And then this will be the two-story addition. So just looking at an elevation. The addition roof will tie into the existing roof and be slightly lower than the existing roof. Um, you can kind of see that right here. Let me just go back to the floor plan. You know, we're keeping the, the addition kind of separate from the original line of the house to kind of differentiate between the addition and the primary structure on both sides. So it's pretty clear that it was a there will be an addition to the home. <clears throat> Just kind of go down the, the wall section, which kind of describes the, uh... so starting at the roof, um, <clears throat> the roof does, it has a metal, there's currently a metal roof there that's called an R panel roof and this is sort of a this is a little detail of it so it's not a 5V crimp it's the family of the 5V crimp but instead of having a, a little V like this it has like a rounded top and it's all screwed in so I mean we're proposing to 
put that same roof on to the addition um, because that's kind of the roof that was present on the home and I assume that was the historical roof. <clears throat> and then going down to the soffits, our plan is to uh, match the soffit system, which will have a wood fascia board. And this is a picture of the existing soffit. So it's a one by four beaded tongue and groove. That's, we're proposing the same soffit on the addition. It's not exposed rafter tails. It's actually a, you know, a flat soffit that we're proposing because that's what was on the existing home. And moving down, it'll all be a, a wood frame structure uh, we will have a concrete stem wall that will get clad in uh, brick veneer to try to match the uh, the existing profile on the on the house. Um, the architect has drawn exposed rafter tails for the the, the porch on the first floor, um, just to kind of differentiate the porch a little bit from the house. And we are proposing all clad windows for the addition, wood clad windows. Um, we haven't chosen which manufacturer we're gonna use yet. It could be Geldwin, it could be Marvin, but they all carry a nice low profile uh, clad units that, that, that look a lot like wood windows. The, uh, the trim around the windows, the existing home has Two by six, and I had a picture of that, so I'm here. Um, here we go. This is a picture of what's currently there. We don't know if that was the original, but that's what's on the house. So we've kind of shown that on our elevations to, to match existing because we don't have any other reference to what was there, but it is a pretty simplistic version of, 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 you know, window trim with a one by six on the sides and a one by six on the top. And the window sill is a, is a two by, so that's, if you look at the elevations and you look at the, the wall section, that's sort of what we're proposing for the window and door trim. Um, there will be, there, we are proposing a, a folding door for the back porch and that would be a, a wood clad unit as well. Um, the porch flooring will have, uh, you know, tongue and groove PT decking on it. All of the wood trim around the columns and the beam wraps and the fascia we're gonna try to, you know, replicate or at least um, pay homage to, to the existing home. Um, I think I've kind of covered the basics of the construction part of it and what we're proposing architecturally, so I'll be open to answer any questions if you have them. Okay, we'll move on to the staff report at this time. Thank you. This is Ron Vila. I'm staff with Historic Preservation. <clears throat> staff finding that this application is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines. We had a series of conditions attached to your staff report on page four. Uh, some discussion points were that uh, for him to provide the delineation from the period home to the new uh, structure. On the west side, he bumped it in to show that delineation. And on the east side, he, the, the, the structure that was upon you know, uh, this request was removed. He bumped it in so there was no variance request attached to that. And we had it held at the porch so was not more proud towards the property line than the porch was there. So he bumped it out on that side. Uh, I think additional discussion is needed for the demolition plan where it's gonna be held to the rear and if there's any rehabilitation to be done to the primary structure as part of this request. I think lastly, uh, to close is the roof material. That R channel is something that is kind of foreign to the district, but it's on the primary structure. 
It is similar to the 5V crimp that is a, a roofing material that we routinely approve, but there are some differences. So <clears throat> I'll continue that discussion and see where it takes you this evening. That concludes my portion. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you, Ron. We'll go ahead and move on to the public comment period. If there's anyone in the audience, yes, sir. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Armin Smith. I go by Frank. I live at 1002 South Fremont. I've lived that address for over 50 years. I have seen an awful lot in our district. The way my property is with Brad and Roy is, is I'm in the north half of the lot, on the, basically on the Fremont part where they're on Jaton. So my view is basically this whole proposed addition that they're going to do. So I've also seen the trailer park addition that's happened over time and people coming and going and everything else from that addition back there. So I am wholeheartedly in favor of what Brad and Roy want to do with this addition. It's not going to go back any further. So what I see out my kitchen window to the back, basically their backyard, uh, is going to be much better than what is there now. And I'm sure with what they're going to add above, their kids are getting bigger, and their kids are going to need more space. So I wholeheartedly suggest that you approve this wonderful addition to this wonderful neighbor's property. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, sir. So obviously seeing no other people in the audience, we'll go ahead and close the <laughs> portion. Um, and then commissioners will ask questions, starting with Mr. Prokop. Um, can you uh, bring up the wall sections again, please? Um, again, the, the, the font is really, really small and, and faded, so we can't really read much of what that, that wording is saying. But um, you mentioned... I was going to say, zoom in if you can. Thank you. Yeah. Is there a and particular the, the spot you want to zoom in on? Seems to be better. Yeah, for you, maybe. I can't, I can't read that far. <laughs> um, I, I have these for a reason, okay? These aren't just pretty. <laughs> Is there a particular um, spot you want to zoom in on? The, uh, well, in, in your presentation, you said that the crawl space um, was going to have a brick veneer to match the existing. This wall section doesn't show any brick veneer. So I was wondering if that is shown anywhere. Were you thinking of full-size bricks? Were you thinking, you know, a real brick or brick tile? Well, there's a thin note brick. down there on the bottom. It's a thin, it's a thin brick veneer applied to. Uh, What's the existing block? What is the existing? Do, do, do you have an ex, do, do you have any? Is it on real brick on the existing? Please come up to the podium. Sorry, yes, yeah, thank material. you. Yes, it's okay. real brick. We, um, it's real brick. It's not a veneer in the front, and we'd like to match it in the back. Okay, but with real brick or yes, with brick? Yes, no, real brick. Okay, so that's different than the drawing show currently. The drawing show with thin brick tile. I would prefer it to be real brick so that it's we the would, same brick. We would as well. Okay, so I apologize for that. <laughs> it's okay. There's, no, there's nothing to be sorry for. Um, so, I mean, I think that should be amended uh, to the drawings. Um, what is the roof overhangs for both the main structure, the typical roof overhang dimensions? for the existing house and the new addition? Do we have a, an overhang with dimension? I'll be honest, the, uh, the overhang on the wall section is not accurate. It's not real. Um, It's actually showing a one foot six overhang on the elevations. Okay. Um, I cannot attest to the 
actual overhang the, the on the The existing house. overhang dimension. I can, okay. I mean, I can, if you have, I don't know if we have a picture. Yeah, the picture, the picture might, might, we might be able to tell if it's a little, if, it, if it's bigger than one six or two foot. Yeah. I'm betting it's two foot. It's bigger than one foot six, yes. So that probably is a uh, graphic error. Well, our uh, plan uh, is to match the, the existing overhang. Pardon me? Wasn't there a picture from underneath? I think yeah. it was I did, I did have a picture of the soffit. That really doesn't give you a very good idea right. of the scale, but okay. you can kind of see the corner over here. And that's, that's more than one foot six. Well, is that of the porch or is that of the main structure? Uh, that is the front porch. Okay, that, so the porch overhang may be different. the side, it's the west. the west facing side. Of the porch. Yes. Yeah, no. not, the, not the main house. There no, probably is a differentiation between them. No, it was the side, I'm sorry. It was the side of the house. Like The, um, the actual uh, house. Yes, okay. of the home, yes. All right. Um, no, I don't think there's anything wrong with the addition overhang being dimensionally different than the main house. Again, that's another way of having a slight differentiation between the two. Um, so I, I think we want to make sure that those are, are noted and coordinated. Um, what is the, do you know the existing and uh, proposed exposure of the siding? Three inch. Both? Yes. Okay, to duplicate. Again, we're, we're, we're looking for some differentiation between the addition and the existing historic um, I think we probably achieve that with massing and kind of the shifting away from the edge of the. I understand there's there, there's that, but the, it, I, I mentioned this in the previous hearing that when when fifty years from now somebody walks up to that house, can they tell that what was the original house and what was the addition? Um, and and we're looking for them to be compatible and to be very similar but not to duplicate precisely everything from the historic house on the addition, because then it becomes blurred as to what was the real house, what was the original historic portion of the house, and what was done later. Yes, you might be able to tell from a condition standpoint, but um, <clears throat> would you consider a three and a half inch exposure or a four inch exposure on the siding for the addition? Well, or, I mean, aesthetically, six, I. I like the three inch. You like the three. I'm sorry, I, I like I'm sorry. And I know that we want to mix it up. And honestly, just kind of through this presentation, if we would like to, and I don't know how that would work with like even the, the roof being different since that, I don't, well, I don't know. That's technical. I can figure something out. I just prefer the three inch um, aesthetically, but I'm very right. flexible. Um, <laughs> again, is the, uh, is, the, is the material proposed for the siding to wood? Of course. It like, is wood. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, so, again, I don't know what's commercially available out there right now, personally, in the residential wood siding, but um, I would consider you recommend that you can. I would recommend that you consider a slight differentiation. I love the thin three-inch exposure too. It's beautiful. It's it's you know it's got such a nice texture to it. Um, but even a slight deviation from that. Okay might be, you know, it's preferable. Okay. Let's put it that way. Uh, I don't have any other questions. So we, I mean, we, we were able to differentiate pretty easily from the primary structure and what has been added before just because of the way they kind of set things back from the edge of the home. So it's pretty clear and I think that's what we were trying. I mean, I'm not the architect for this, by the way. I'm just the contractor, the architect. Right. Uh, couldn't come this evening, but, um, you know, I mean, of course, if you guys are okay with changing it, I, I think it would functionally work better with the three inch exposure, but if, if the owners are okay with changing that I mean I don't know if that's like a deal breaker or not, I'm asking but... for it to be considered okay you know I'm asking if the owners and the architect would possibly consider that as a way to yeah. distinguish between the existing structure and the new structure 
like I would, you know, I'm not opposed to, or we wouldn't be opposed to, the overhangs being slightly different in dimension from the new to the existing, and that's a way of showing here's where the addition is, here's where the original house was. One of the big aspects of, of historic preservation that we, you know, are trying to or trying to support is is to make sure the historic fabric is preserved and can be identifiable. Um, that's it. Anybody else? I just want to reiterate that we're asking questions and recommendations Not, yeah. and that sort of thing will come out of our discussion to follow. So just know that the discussion points are valid, but right now we're just trying to understand the points of the right. case. So Mr. Meyer, Myers, do you have any questions for the applicant? If you could bring up the section again. Yeah. Well, I just want to point out that you, you told us that it was going to be wood, but the drawing says hardy board there underneath the underneath the porch. So you, you'll, I, I am assuming that you will want to correct that. That, that, that is incorrect. Yeah. yeah, if you move that up, you can actually see uh, the. I, I see it. Yeah, okay. That's incorrect. And then the, all of the windows and the uh, folding door will be wood, will be aluminum clad wood. Correct. Is that correct? correct. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mr. Sen. Windows, I have one source, source spot for, for windows. And there's probably a good reason, but I'd like to know what's happening. Can we go to your rear elevation, please? You have your addition bump out mm -hmm. that is on my left. And you on the second floor, you have those three gang of windows so neatly centered in that mass. Why is it so asymmetrical on the first floor? I do believe that is a function of the layout. Um, because on the first floor, we have a, a laundry the window in the laundry room and then next to that is a breakfast nook and on the Pete can you zoom out again or move I'm the sorry. drawing because we can't we can't, we can't see the floor plan when you're going to the floor plan there you go okay, okay. So that's there, the first floor so yeah. that's our laundry window there and then the three gang is the little breakfast nook and that's and then the second floor master bedroom with a with the three gang kind of centered in the room. So. Right, so the, the purpose was laundry, so laundry could be fixed in that corner. Which one, the first or second? I'll show the laundry. <laughs> I see what you have. I still find it kind of odd how it all fits together like that. It's 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 the only sore spot I see on, on the entire raft of your elevations between the new and the addition and everything else. I don't, I don't even object to your uh, uh, accordion door. I do not, but the, the yeah. you have this prominent architectural element, mm -hmm. and it begs for a, some manner of symmetry, and it's not there. And I don't, and and I don't have a solution for you on that one. And I and I understand where these windows are coming from on your all's part. Any I have. Questions? I have no further question. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure that'll come up in discussion. I actually thought he was going to ask a question about the accordion door. Um, so he will know. <laughs> <laughs> 
So um, again, that'll come up in discussion as well. My question is about the roof. So I'm curious as to the age of the existing roof, and that'll lead me into another question. We don't, we don't know exactly. I, I, it was on the house when we purchased it. Um, and I think that the last sort of insurance inspection that we had revealed that we didn't have to replace it. So it's certainly in the probably 15 year range is my guess. Well, the metal roofs last, last longer than that. Right. Yeah. Right. So they, they said you have plenty of time left on your roof. So, right. But so I don't, we don't have any of those records. You think it's 10 plus years, 15 plus years, somewhere yeah. in that age. I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm just asking yeah. a generic question for a reason. I'm thinking somewhere around there, but okay. again, I mean. All right. Now, my next question, can you show us the, well, how, how the roof lines tie in again? Because I saw his eyes whenever I heard different panels. We don't have a roof plan. Um, so do you want to maybe see like the... Just kind of want to get a better okay, idea of... I think the side of might give you a, that, yeah. an idea. Let me try to find... So are we actually tying into the main body of roof at all? This probably best represents the uh, the tie-in because this is obviously the primary house here. Yes. And this is the addition, so you'll have a, a ridge here with a or, you know the, the, the ridge going back to here. So I mean I don't I don't know if you can visualize that, but I don't. It's kind of hard to show you without a roof plan, but we don't have one of those. But yes, it will tie in. There will be an, there will be an overbuild on top of the existing roof. So part of part of the existing roof will get removed. <clears throat> yeah. So that you could get creative maybe with the valleys and transfer from one type to the other, but I as a contractor myself, can see why you made the face you made. Um, the other question was be, so, so being they do tie in, going back to the overhang sizing, that may create some possible difficulties as well. I mean, it's not an easy, the, the architect and I kind of we worked out the, the roof plan. It's tricky. It was an existing fireplace. They were kind of having to build around. So it's not it's not an easy roof to tie into. So it's going to have its challenges. Um, you know, I, I you know without studying it a little bit more, there could be issues if we don't match the existing overhang. The struggle that and, and you'll hear it in discussion is. the panel that's currently there. And so I'm asking some questions because I'm trying to get an idea because it's not typically a panel that we would approve in this district. Um, Just a quick note now that I'm thinking about it. If you, if you reduce the overhang, that could change the pitch on the roof as well. So, I mean, I think the preference would be to kind of try to match the pitch and the overhang to kind of keep things consistent because when you shrink down the overhang it's going to change the pitch of the roof and that will really start to make it smaller and I think you guys kind of want to get that a little you know the look of the original pitch on the house I mean at least, I can't speak for them but I think it would it would, I think the design will work better if we kind of keep the, the pitch and the overhang the same as the existing home. Okay, thank you. Um, can we go to the second floor plan with the demo? I'm gonna need to zoom out, please. Can you zoom out so you can see, yeah, thank you. 
I'd like to see the new right next to it as well. A little bit more zoom. Thank you. That's good. Um, The um, the interiors of the of the home are they period appropriate still, or have they no. been? They are in the original structure that we're keeping. Right. Right. So that's what we're not knocking down those walls. Those are the interiors that we've kept up as well. But the uh, the overhang that you see here is. I've been told was a sleeping porch in the past that has been closed oh, I'm in. I'm not going to ask about that one. The reason why about the interior, about the you see the interior walls and the double door that are dashed? Yes. Are those I, original pieces? I Have you it. been in the... I, in, yeah, I, I don't think they built the little angle. No, 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 not that one. The one? other one. Yeah. So, oh. so this is all one, this is all the master bedroom yep. right now. And it's connected by these two very kind of fragile glass opening doors. I doubt that they are original. Um, they, they, they're certainly older, but they don't seem like they would be original. And then um, the back portion of the bedroom is basically going to be converted into two rooms, right? I um, understood where you're going with it, but so... Um any time that a historic portion of a primary structure, a contributing structure, is uh, is demoed, right? There's always a concern that historic fabric is lost, mm -hmm. and certainly we're we're more concerned with the exterior. But if if this was a very comprehensive project, and, and we were going through an ad valorem where you were asking for a tax break. We actually get into the historic components that are inside of buildings as well, and we're always wondering what's going on inside, right? And we can understand that closet thing in the corner with the forty-five degrees. Yeah, we didn't didn't <laughs> no. typically do that in this period of time. Maybe there were some odd conditions, but the fact that you have the divider doors, maybe. So it may be a question of having staff review that in the field before you demolish that, you know. The only that. thing that I can say about that is that the trim, like the molding is different, the picture, it's not like, you know, the, just the molding in the room is not similar to the other room. Okay, all right. Um, other than that, there was a note here about uh, fencing and hardscape on the site plan. Is that actually on the site plan, the hardscape? I don't remember hearing about hardscaping, no, I mean, we, except for the drive, the ribbon bit. drive. We had the driveway, and then, um, I mean, it's, they, they have a driveway there currently. It's mm -hmm. a ribbon drive, but we're going to extend it. It's just going to be the concrete. For the back. It's going to be ribbon. Okay, and then the fill? It's grass. Whatever's, grass. whatever's there. grass. Okay. And is that the intent is to complete? And we we put the driveway in initially when we moved in. Okay. So it would just continue the same. Okay. With the grass. And then um, in terms of hardware and lighting, I don't remember seeing that in the presentation. Have you selected those yet? Um, no. I mean, we would probably do it similar to what we have. I was saying with like an aged brass front door. We we have bevel lighting in the front. Okay. I would probably match that in the back, just kind of for aesthetics. Okay. So, but we're not doing black, I think, like the... We don't, we actually don't get into color here. We're oh, sorry. More, we're more, it's okay, you don't know that. <laughs> we get into the aesthetics, what it looks like, okay. is it appropriate? It is, and I've ordered it from, like, in the front, House of Antique Hardware, like, it's... Okay. <laughs> sorry. It's all good. Um, the windows, we talked about what they would be made of. Um... The existing windows on the home, they're one over ones, correct? Mm, they're they a are, hodgepodge. Yeah, they're a hodgepodge. So the original in, in the front, the one that you can see on as you're looking at the front elevation on the left is an original window, and it's just one over one. Okay. Most of the other windows were added before our time, but the ones on the side elevations do have the 
but they're all metal. Um, oh, okay. So the intent is obviously not to do those, um, and we would even like to, I think, replace the ones on that west side that Ooh. are the kind of shoddy aluminum windows with right. the same ones that we're going to do all of them. And those are going to be what? One over one? My preference would be one over one. Okay. Flexible? Okay. okay. Yeah. But that's um, my preference. Are they double hung or single hung? I think probably single hung. Okay. Yeah. Just asking the questions. <laughs> <laughs> single hung. Okay. Is there any kind of venting in the foundation? It the rats can breathe. Does. It, it does. Um, if you're going to have wood flooring, yeah. if it's if this is a raised, is this a true stem with with the fill? The it's, foundation. There's no fill. It's it's crawl space. It will be it's crawl space. It's crawl space. Um, so, as I mentioned, the front porch we did is is all brick, so all the way around that front porch, and it does have the empty spaces left in various spots for ventilation. Around the rest of the house, it's a little bit different. Some of it is just uh, um, lattice work that mm -hmm. you know we're gonna um, try to make it just look consistent throughout, whether it's brick all the way around and you know, or whether it's um, work with what we have. I don't know if we're So really your sure. drawings currently don't show any kind of venting. Can we look at the um, they, they the uh, one of the side one of the side elevations of the proposed yeah, they do not show venting, um, but obviously that will need to happen. So, so they look like yeah, yeah. Yeah, there might be a square there. There might be a square there. Yeah, but it's not enough. <laughs> you don't. That's the only. Man, we, she has a, a vent no. shown on both sides. Um, she does or she does not. She does. There's another one shown on the west elevation. Right there, a little. Is there any notation going to it? No. No. And there's nothing in the wall sections that call out a vent? Correct. Let them answer it. <laughs> that could lead to a lot of no, problems by adding it up. You know, yeah. it's, we're obviously going to have to yeah. provide venting, and we can probably work with staff on a little cover for that vent. Quarterly detail. Um, so, just just as a point of information, if you have wood flooring and you have wood substructure, you have to have some kind of venting because mm -hmm. your wood's going to warp over yeah. time. So, I know you don't like to see all those openings. Oh no, we have them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we do. It's it's actually fairly open and. <laughs> In fact, we had to kind of cover up some of it because of, again, to, to get new homeowners policy. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Plus the but it was very temporary because we knew we were, we yeah, were yeah. hoping that we were going to be knocking yes, off the back yes. side anyways. Um, but yeah, there is, there is venting there around is, oh, and we do have okay. original floors in, in the yeah. downstairs part that we're keeping. So absolutely. Good. Good, mm -hmm. good to hear. Um, I think that's it for my questions. Any other questions <clears throat> for the applicant? I have none. Thank you. None. None? All right, you have five minutes for rebuttal. One five. No, 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 five. I think I think we're okay. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Absolutely. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing and discuss the case. So I think there are a couple of things that have to be reviewed before. Um, um, obviously, the overhang dimension needs to be coordinated, you know, with, and yes, coming down at 45 degree angles with the existing roof, you kind of want the overhangs to, to work out at a 45 yeah. degree angle or a 90 and, and split that. Well, it would, it's still, it's still would if you're just shortening, if you're just shortening the overhangs, the roof pitch stays the same. But the ridge line the roof, comes down. Right, the roof. Right, the roof coverage changes. Right, the actual Slight. volume of the roof coverage would yeah, change because slightly. Because that ridge line and the, the hip lines come down. Either way, I don't think the architect has worked through this. I think the architect needs to work through certain things 
mm -hmm. like that. Um, whether the roof can be, the addition roof can be different metal than, you know, metal profile than the existing, I think is something the architect can take a, another look at. Um, I don't think it's the original roof to the house. Um, nor without having nor, nor, all the information in front of us, I don't know that we can make that no, determination. Right, we can't make that determination. Right. No, I just said, in my opinion. Well, the reason but, I was asking was was what I was hoping to hear was that what was there was you know they knew that it was twenty years old. That it was, and it was getting close to being right. replaced anyway, mm -hmm. and yeah. we would kind of say, well, we like this in the back, and then eventually, five or ten years, you could use right. that on the front. Yeah, well, the metal, the metal can go fifty. It can go. It can go a long. I know, go a long time. Yeah, yeah. it's an original. Doubt it very much. Yeah, but um, what we're missing here, though, for that is is a, is a good roof plan. Or we could have taken a look at it yeah. because you know if if the new roof is 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 being built into the existing with valleys you can have right. valley flashing valley there. flashings and you separate the two and materials you separate the two and you can have yeah. two you different can have types two of different metal. completely different kinds of materials right and it looks um, like it may be but without the plan it's without hard the plan to right know. No. right mm -hmm. so um, but then mr fremont will not see consistency mr fremont being the neighbor at the rear <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. unfortunately, it's not going to be consistent because it's going to be much bigger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. it's also the view is going to change. I'm so sorry, but it is going to change. It's going to change for the better, though. It's going to change for the better. It's going to be a much better looking rear that he's what looking were, at. Um, did the raptor tails look out of place to anyone else on the porch? On the porch. Oh no! I think I think okay. that's entirely appropriate for a utility okay. structure like for, that. For a porch, yeah. That's why I asked. Um, <laughs> but I think we got you know we I think that we need to work with staff on the crawl space vent, the hardware and lighting, the roof overhang dimension, the metal roof material, the real brick veneer on the foundation versus the the, the fake sliced brick tiles, which never never look right. Uh, and, and again, in my opinion. Um, Otherwise, I think it's you know I think it's a great improvement to the mm -hmm. to the house and uh, it's a it's a it's a lovely you know uh, lovely building it, 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 as a thought as an alternative for the fake veneer veneer of the uh, uh, the thin brick I understand your situation with that because it seems sometimes uh, in, a a oddly very uniform and different sort of a product after having you know worked with brick for so many years you know it's a totally different animal that you know as an aside such as on my house uh, which is from the 50s uh, you have the stucco brick which is a, a potentially an alternative where you would match uh, the uh, uh, the joint lines as you layer that thing up because it's all going to get painted is it it Why is. would it all get painted? The front isn't painted. It, it isn't? I don't think no, so. It's, I, it's, only it's on the true front. Brick. exposed red brick. It's true yeah. brick. On yeah. the brick. It's real brick on the front. I think I think brick. the owner was very clear that they, they preferred a brick they material right. and they've they've said that they would reconsider the, the type and right. go to full brick. So I think we're okay there. I don't think we need to suggest okay. alternates. One mm -hmm. thing I do want to discuss and it, just reminded me um, the discussion of the difference in the size profile of the siding so this in this particular case and we've talked about this before in other cases over the years how do you differentiate you know historic from new there are so many different ways to do it mm -hmm. and you can have matching profile in this case in my opinion because the addition is removed from the, it is not flush to either side of the existing primary structure. They've gone to great lengths to ensure that either they recess it or they pull it out in the other direction. So that in itself allows that differentiation. If they were a flat facade, we would tell them put vertical boards mm -hmm. in. So the massing does lend itself to that perfect kind of, for me it's a perfect differentiator um, and delimiter um, and I think it's very clear that you'll be able to tell 
because even if the foundation brick gets close to what's it's existing, never gonna it's never going to match, right? right? And um, the roofing and, the, and, and all of that, there are so many indicators of differentiation that I think if they truly want that three inch, they can have that three inch, okay. right? Okay. And she really wants the three inch. Yeah, so I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> I, I'm glad you brought it up because I was going to. And on this particular property, I, I think it's going to look odd if you don't match the three inch. This is a big mass. I and mean, it, it's, the fact that historically it was basically more or less a boarding home, you know, it, it begs for something to let it just be. <laughs> when, when we see properties that have a six or seven inch and, and they change one inch off of that to the layman, nobody can tell the difference on this particular one where you've because got a three so inch it is a, and you change that, even if you went to four, it's gonna scream at you like it's eight. It's just, you're, anybody's gonna be able to see it. Um, and, and if they had not come in, then maybe we'd be having a different discussion, but they, they have. And, and I think they've got yeah. like, like you know, we've already heard, there's a laundry list here of, of ways right. that they've shown it's us. Not, yeah, so I mean, I, at all. I agree that the siding to me is okay. let the owner if, if 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 they in fact want the three inch. I think we at least well, some of us agree that it's the way to go. I I agree, and, and it maybe perhaps for a slightly different reason. Um, there, that three inch siding uh, is not terribly common. I don't care where you go, it, it's usually a larger siding. There are other examples of, of, of narrow siding. It, it's not that common. Mm -hmm. And what we have here is, is, a, is a, originally a, a very bold, large structure having a big addition. And that, that narrow siding is such a defining characteristic of that building and its texture and its presence on the street that to me, I think not extending that to the addition is a mistake. Well, I mean, I, I hear you, but I could also argue the exact same opposite using the exact same Object. facts <laughs> that you just presented in that that three inch is so unique and of its time that duplicating it erases its significance and uniqueness. Because you've just duplicated it, but I don't think I mean, it's going to be completely duplicated. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. A, I don't think it's a, a, a breaking point. You know, it's not. It's not a. You know, uh, a thing that you know I'm going <laughs> to die on the hill for. Okay. So um, no, I think I think we can um, we can all acknowledge as a board that, that there is enough other differentiation. Oh yes. To not make that a significant differentiation to be necessary. Um, so we can leave that in the hands of the of the uh, the owner and the architect. Yes, and the yep. contractor, because yes. there may also be significant financial uh, consequences for changing it or not changing it, or issues finding it, or even yeah, issues yeah, finding it. Yeah, you know, they may want to change it to something else because they can't find <laughs> that exact same thing anymore. But that's that's not our. I think we're okay. With I do think it would be strange if they put a 12 inch board on, but you know. Oh. <laughs> I, think, I think it should be a vertical board and batten. Well, there everywhere. you go. Thank you. Full farm, farm house. Total, total sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I think we have, to my count, we have five, five items that we've been hashing over. Okay. The overhang, the roof material, the roof overhangs get that first um, the hardware and lighting the crawl space and the venting and then um, the note about the hardy board being wood and real brick veneer. oh yeah yeah, yeah. Real brick veneer. Right. so we have six okay. what was the last one the Fixed. real the real doing brick. real brick versus full versus full brick, full veneer. brick Versus and then veneer. the hardy board, the mistaken detail note of hardy board. 
be that corrected. That was all I had, unless somebody. I, I just want to say something about the roof material. Yeah. Um, if they. Actually, I should say roof profile, because we, we've already stat established that it's probably going to be metal. That's right. still their choice, but. Right. So, but the, pro the particular profile that is there is a more modern profile than the 5B crimp. And it was, it, it somehow got there. It is a very long lasting material. And it seems to me to make a great deal of sense to allow them to continue that and not to, you know, not to involve ourselves in that portion of the, of the, of the design. It is to the passerby, I think it's, it's a very reasonable material. You know, it's like, oh, this doesn't stand out as being odd here. Um, so I think that we should, I don't think we should get into that one. I can agree with that. I mean, I, to me, I think the profile is, is close enough to the, what we would typically mm -hmm. suggest. It's a residentially scaled profile, not an industrial one. Right, it's not a massive. I, it, I don't it, think it's a panel yeah, that we would, if presented to us as a brand new roof with a project, we would necessarily check that box and say it's okay. Correct. But because it's already there, again, why I was asking the age, mm -hmm. um, I think we leave it, you know, potentially even up to them. They may decide they want to differentiate using that, or they may not. But mm -hmm. if we give them that choice, then uh, ultimately it's not us as a board kind of we're not dictating it. We're like they're literally saying here. You know, so we're down to five. You have an option. Yeah. yeah. So we're down to five. We're down to five. I mean, we really didn't discuss the windows in the back. That and does I, bring up one other. And point. I think that there there might could be some creativity there. Maybe if you went with single windows and and mold them with a wider mullion, but that would you would get away from that triple bank maybe with a double and then another double. I, I don't know. I don't think it'd fit. It, 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 it may not. Yeah. Um, One of the things about windows that I don't think we discussed is that they mentioned that the old windows, there, there are several old windows that they were planning to replace that were weird metal windows that had already been replaced once. They, they are, well, they, you saw them in, um, they're, not, they're not showing it really well in this teeny mm -hmm. tiny thing, but they right. are, they look more like um, 50s or 60s style. Right. So those style. windows are in the contributing structure. Right. Do we allow clad wood windows to be installed in a contributing structure rather than an addition? Or do we, do we mandate that if those windows are to be replaced? Because that's not even on the plans. That was just casually discussed in, in conversation. True. I think probably we should cover that. Because you're right, they mentioned they did mention that, and although right. they didn't show that in the elevations They're as not proposed as part of work, the proposed plan. it could be an if sort of thing. If windows are replaced in the original structure, they would they will be all wood. Be they wood. would they would need to be all wood, and they would need to match or be as close a close match to the other existing historic fabric windows. Right, because the, they did mention at least one right. in the that, front porch area. Yeah, that will work. Because if it doesn't have to get replaced, it's not an right. issue. So we're back to six. Um, if. Should. <laughs> should. Coordinate mm -hmm. windows. Do we have a motion then? We think. Do we not need to ask the gentleman, the client? Not yet. No, oh, okay. we have to make the motion. Okay. First. But before the vote. <laughs> yeah. I move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 23 0 0 0 no. 248. Oh, just 23-248, I'm looking at the wrong Don't document. Don't look at that one. Okay, 23-248, 
for the property of 1711 West Jetton Avenue um, with the following conditions that the owner and architect um, provide a, a authentic brick veneer and not a brick tile where indicated on the drawings that the description in the drawings using the word hardy board is altered to the word wood that the roof overhang dimensions be coordinated with staff that the hardware and lighting be coordinated with staff that crawl space venting be further looked into by the architect and the owner and coordinated with staff and should any windows in the existing historic structure be replaced that those windows shall be coordinated with staff because based upon the finding in fact the proposed project is consistent with the high park design guidelines and the city of tampa um, for the following reasons that it uh, is consistent with the neighborhood um, it respects the uh, the High Park Design Guidelines and the Secretary of Interior Standards. I'll second that motion. And sir, before we, if you can come forward. We just need to verify you understood the conditions that were placed on the motion and that um, you understand them and that you agree to them. Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, all those in favor, please state aye and raise your hand, indicating so. Aye. aye. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Much Best of you. luck. Best of luck. Oh, um, we need to enter some things into the yes. record, right? Right? Okay. You all are done. Thank you Thank so you. much. Oh, we have one. We're going to do a motion to enter into the record um, exhibits provided to the commission during tonight's hearing. I'm sorry. Say it again, I'm sorry. Too much noise. Staff approvals. I move that staff, that staff approvals and all documents received during this uh, hearing be entered into the record. Second. <laughs> we, we have one second by Mr. Sutton. <laughs> All in favor, please state aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next month. Or uh, Wednesday. <laughs> okay. You're here Wednesday. Yes, I am. Are you?